So what is BIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or BIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, EIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahing problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication, and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies, o PIDS, na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiya ang makakatulong sa ating bansa. Sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making 
itong bigyan din ng kalaghan ng polisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakahalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag polisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! So what is BIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or BIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, EIDS Corner Seminars and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERP is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERP has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Dapat po munang alamin or matukoy ang pangunahin problema ng bansa upang mapagtuunan ng pansin at mabigyan ng solusyon. We should have a specific goals, um, do research, and make a policy that is fair for everyone. Walang problema sa polisiya. Iayos lang ang pagpapatupad. Bago patubas ang batas, pag-aralan muna gusto ng government. Two things, clarity and execution. Both, you need the communication, 
and monitoring, monitoring, monitoring. As simple as that. Mandato ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies o PIDS na gumawa ng mga pag-aaral at pananaliksik ng mga pulisiya at programa ng pamalaan at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas sa pagbabalangkas ng mga pulisiyang makakatulong sa ating bansa. Sinusulong ng aming ahensya ang evidence-based policy making upang bigyan din ng kalaghan ng pulisiya na batay sa datos at policy research na sumusuri sa tunay na kalagayan ng ating mga komunidad. Napakalaga ng policy research, lalo na sa mga panahong dumadaan sa krisis ang ating bansa. Kapag pulisiya ay pinag-aralan, susulong ang bayan! Welcome to Welcome the PIDS, to the PIDS webinar, webinar series. series. Before we start the webinar, we would like to give you a few reminders. For attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry. In case you have a question, the moderator will read it during the open forum. For those attending via Cisco WebEx, use the chat box located at the lower part of the screen. Click the chat icon, type your name and affiliation, and your question, and send to all panelists. You may send your questions while the presentation is in progress. The moderator will read them during the open forum. For Facebook viewers, at least two questions from the comment section will be read by the moderator during the open forum. We will moderate all questions to ensure that they are relevant to the scope of the presentation. Thank you for joining us and we look forward to your active participation. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the PIDS webinar series where we discuss development issues based on data and evidence. We trust that all of you are safe and in good health. I am Sheila CR, and I will be your moderator. Indigenous peoples or IPs are an intrinsic part of our history and society. They are guardians of unique cultures and traditions, languages, and knowledge. They also play an important role in managing the environment as they see themselves as stewards of the land and its resources. Yet our IPs are among are often among 
the poorest and the most vulnerable. They receive less education and healthcare and often suffer from discrimination and even violence. This afternoon, in support of the National Indigenous Peoples Month, PIDS organized this conversation to serve as a venue for discussing how effective have government policies and structures been in protecting the welfare of our IPs and how we can make those policies and structures better. To officially open our event, I now give the floor to our president at PIDS, Dr. Aniceto Orbeta Jr. Um, let me start my remarks by uh, acknowledging uh, the following. Uh, from the government. Uh, we have uh, Department of Agrarian Reform under Secretary Virginia Orogo from the National uh, Commission on Indigenous People or NCIP. We have Secretary Alin Capuyan, uh, Region 2 Commissioner Norberto Navarro, um, Cordillera Administrative Region and Region 1 Commissioner Gaspar Kayat, uh, Director Hasel Majurir Lucas, Director Jeronimo Aguio. From the National Economic and Development Authority, we have Assistant Secretary Greg Pineda and Regional Director Myla Faye Aurora Carino. From the House of Representatives, Congressional Pol Policy uh, and Budget Research Department, we have Director General Romulo Emanuel Miral Jr. From the Department of Agriculture, we have Director Lucia Campum Campumanes and the Cooperative and Development Authority Executive Director Ray Ilivaso. From the local government, we have Boston Davao Oriental Vice Mayor and Municipal Tribal Chieftain Dato Eleuterio Manaitai. From the private sector, we have Golden Press Chief Executive Officer uh, Maria Bilen Lim. And we have also MPO Leaders Engineering and Urban Planning Services Executive Director Maria La Ana Pulido. From the academy, let me acknowledge the following uh, University of the Philippines, Cebu. Vice Chancellor Wina Gira, uh, UP Los Banos Institute for Governance and Rural Development Director Evely Serrano, Politecnic University of the Philippines uh, Dean Lualhate de la Cruz and Dean Julieta Fuente and Director Marcela, Marcela Figura, Surigao del Sur State University Dean Ernie Lux Matildo, Notre Dame University Dean Nancy Alombro, Southern Luzon State University Director Evangeline Misiha and Director Percival Virano, uh, Northern Iloilo Polytechnic State College Batad Campus Associate Director Eva Montero. From the CSOs, NGOs, and INGOs, we have the World Bank Philippines Sustainable Development Sector Leader Madhu Raghunath and Country Office Senior Social Development Specialist Carlos Tomas Perez Brito. In the Institute for Development of Education and Ecological Alternatives Incorporated, Direct Executive Director Roger Garina. We have Lawig PH uh, Founder and Executive Director Richel Dayan Claros. And Saganang Sakahan Incorporated Director Daniel Agustin. The Samahan ng Kabataang Voluntary ng Pilipinas Deputy Regional Director uh, Albert Lee. Let me also greet our friends from the media. And finally, let me greet our guests, colleagues from government, academia, and civil society, media, and private sector who are watching to the PIDS and SERPI Facebook uh, pages. Good afternoon to all. We are back to our weekly webinars, starting with today's topic on assessing the institutional arrangements and the implementation policies of indigenous people. This forum is our humble contribution to the celebration of the National Indigenous Peoples Month. According to the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP, over 400 million indigenous peoples or IPs spread globally across 90 countries. An estimated 14 to 17 million IPs from 110 groups live in the Philippines, their cultural zone taking as much as 44% of the country's land area. A UND publication in 2010 also said that among the regions, the largest percentage of IPs as are, comes from Mindanao with 63%, followed by Luzon with 34% and Visayas with 3%. Despite the importance of IPs in our society, they remain among the poorest and marginalized. As a result, 
they continue to, to face challenges in accessing essential services and property rights. In 1997, the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act, or IPRA, was enacted to recognize and promote all rights of IPs and Indigenous Cultural Communities, or ICCs. It also create, created the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples, or NCIP, to serve as the primary government agency responsible for the formulation and implementation of policies, plans, and programs to recognize, protect, and promote the rights of ICCs and IPs. This afternoon, we will feature the PIDS study authored by Senior Research Fellow Sunny Domingo and Research Specialist RB Joy Manihar that looks at the IPRA and NCIP 24 years after the creation. The study reviewed the provisions of the law and its grounding and conducted case studies on the implementation of related policies on ICC. Uh, we also, or, uh, indigenous communities, cultural communities. We also look at these into the strengths and uh, challenges faced by the CIP as an institution. Finally, they provided recommendations on how to improve the NCIP and IPRA. To our, to enrich our discussions, we invited, uh, as we usually do, uh, representatives from various sectors to share their insights and experiences on the topic. We have we are honored to have NCIP Director for Policy Planning and Research, uh, Mary Grace Buasen, and Mr. Orda, uh, Jordan uh, Fronda, Research and Policy uh, Research and Advocacy Program Coordinator of the Center for Environment Concerns in the Philippines, and Dato Lipatuan Joward Unat, the Chairperson of the Mindanao Indigenous Peoples Conference for Peace and Development. We hope that today's this webinar will help inform the discussion on welfare of our indigenous peoples. I look forward to hearing you, everyone's insights during the open forum. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Orbeta. Uh, friends, before we proceed to the presentation, uh, allow me to reiterate our house rules for those who are joining us the first time or who missed uh, hearing the recording be be before uh, we started the webinar. So to join the open forum, just use the chat box, uh, which is located at the lower part of uh, your WebEx screen. Just type your name and affiliation in your question and send it to uh, all panelists. Or if you want others to see your uh, question or comment, to everyone is OK, but not to a particular person. And you may do this while um, the um the presentations are in progress i will read uh, your question uh during the open forum and since we have limited time please also make sure that your questions are concise and uh related uh to uh to the webinar okay for our viewers on facebook you are also welcome to participate in our conversation just tap your question in the comment section and i will read up to two questions during the open forum for all speakers, uh, please kindly observe the time limit so as not to affect the present uh, the presentations of those after you. We are giving our presenter up to 25 minutes and each discussant up to 15 minutes. Okay. So at this point, I now invite all of you to pay attention to our future study for this webinar authored by Dr. Uh, Sunny Domingo and, and Ms. R.V. Joy uh, Manihar. Um, it will be presented by Dr. Domingo, who is a senior research fellow at PIDS. Uh, Sunny has more than three decades of extensive uh, multi-sector technical and policy research exposure in agricultural R&D and extension in natural resource management and disaster risk reduction and management. His current research interests include um, ec ecological integrity and environmental policy, technical agriculture and resource economics and climate change and disaster risk management. Sunny obtained his bachelor's and master's degrees from uh, the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and his PhD in applied economics from the Orange Campus of Charles Sturt University in New South Wales, Australia, as a fellow of the Australian Center for International Agricultural Research. Sunny, the floor is now yours. Uh, 
Thank you, Sheila. And I'll just uh, share my screen. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes. Um. Okay, good. Thank you. I have 25 minutes, so I'll have to be fast in, in covering all my slides. So the study is all about reviewing indigenous people's policy and institutional grounding in the country. So we actually started looking at uh, ecological uh, integrity related studies before and just going around to the different uh, LGUs, different communities uh, from the zone to Mindanao. We've always encountered issues about IP rights, ancestral domains, being affected by those other uh, ecological integrity related concerns. So now we are focusing on IP and IP related uh, policy and its grounding. And we start with the very basic grounding of policy, which um, in the country is very much embedded in our constitution. So the state recognizes uh, the inherent rights of ICCs, IPs, self-governance, and self-determination. So this is very much embedded in our 1987 constitution and grounded through Republic Act 8371 or the Indigenous Peoples Rights Act of 1997. So policy-wise, we are covered. Implementation-wise, we'll see later on uh, in the course of our presentation. So the objective really of the study is to conduct a policy and institutional review of IPRA and uh, look at how it's being implemented and grounded. We did several approaches in terms of looking at policy and looking at the institutions involved. Number one, we did case studies. We looked at uh, the NCIP central office uh, as the, the main institutional um, organization mandate to look at uh, IP-related concerns. We looked at several regional cases, including CAR, that of the Davao region, and the Western Visayas. So all of these had their own uh, thematic uh, focus you know, in terms of grounding policy and in terms of their own very unique way of grounding uh, whatever we have in terms of IPRA and its provisions, and in terms of what they have in terms of IPs and ICCs in their own domains. So we looked at policy, we looked at institutional structures, we looked at the implementation processes uh, among those regional uh, coverages. So where are the IPs? Uh, we are looking at this graph and we see that uh, we have a lot uh, within the Mindanao area, as also mentioned by our president, Dr. Orbeta. So region 11 is number one with around 16.14%, region 12, 13%, region 10, 12% CAR, with 10%, one with around 8.5 and uh, around uh, 7.2 or 3% for region two. I mentioned region two because later on it will be highlighted in one of the graphs. So in Hi, terms Sir of policy, Sonny. Sorry to cut you. Can you just minimize the thumbnail videos on the upper part of your screen so that it, it won't block the text? Thank you, sir. Yeah, how do you do this? I've been trying to, to minimize it. <laughs> okay, there's an <laughs> arrow button on the left side of the thumbnail. Just, yes, perfect. And then just place it on the lower okay. part of your screen. Thank you, sir. All right, so let's continue with the presentation. So policy and institutional evolution uh, provides us with a glimpse as to how the country has dealt with IPs and uh, IP-related concerns. No? All started way back uh, a century ago, early 1900s during uh, the American period. And then uh, we had several uh, manifestations of IP-related uh, concerns being grounded within our bureaucratic institutions. So what you have here uh, very major evolution in terms of what we have organization-wise. Also in, in early 1900s, we had the first uh, accreditation of native titles, those uh, related to 
native territories, territories being occupied by IPs and ID communities. So you have here RA 1888, 1957, Panamin 68, uh, in 1975, PD 690, 84, EO 9, uh, 969, and 1987, and then 1997, we have the, the IFRA being grounded, or, well, being passed and then eventually grounded, with 1998 uh, having its IRR passed. So in terms of uh, department oversights, you have here in the early 1900s, uh, up to the mid 1900s, we have the Department of Interior looking at IP related concerns and organization. From 1957 to 2003, we have the Office of the President looking at uh, IP related institutions. 2004, <clears throat> 2007, we have the, the DAR, Department of Land Reform or Agrarian Reform. 2008 to 2011, the ENR. Then back to the Office of the President, 2012, 2018. Present, uh, we have the DSWD looking at uh, NCIP as, as part of its structural uh, coverage. So just a visual presentation of how the landscape uh, was in IPRA. So we have here the Bureau of uh, non christian Tribes, Panami, EO 961, 969 up to what you have in 1987 and 1997 uh, upon passing of IPRA. Institution wise, we have here as well, uh, probably the most important uh, starts at uh, around here, 1984, Office of Muslim Affairs, Cultural Communities, and then uh, Office of Muslim Affairs for the Northern uh, Cultural Communities and Southern Cultural Communities, which eventually were merged to form NCIP. Department-wise, we also have here the graphical representation of uh, where they are in terms of the umbrella organization. Timelines, uh, in terms of guidelines, probably the most important is, well, you have in 1997, IPRA being passed. Following year, you had its IRR being passed as well. And then eventually, um, you had specific guidelines in terms of grounding specific provisions in that policy. Most important is in 2006, you have the guidelines for FPIC and down the line, uh, it being revised in 2012. Um, the Ancestral Domain Sustainable uh, Development uh, Protection Plan in 2018 is also revised, uh, and that's a very important uh, milestone uh, within the guidelines uh, timeline for IPA-related uh, provisions and concerns. In looking at IPRA, we are also looking at uh, complementation with other existing policies you know, in other sectors, as well as uh, overlapping of, of uh, supposed provisions and mandates of, of related institutions. And that, uh, I think, is the source for so many confusion, for so many complexities you know, in grounding uh, development-related projects, as well as in getting, for example, consens uh, consensus among IT communities in terms of projects and programs being grounded within their ancestral domains. Now looking at NCIP, uh, I think we have a very substantial organization with NCIP. Uh, and thanks to also the the, uh, the base institutions uh, that were merged when NCIP was uh, established because of IPRA. So you have, of course, the chairman, Commission and Bank, and the executive director looking at uh, seven uh, units and 12 regional offices. So this is uh, a very substantial structure in terms of NCIP as an institution. And uh, they have a lot on their plates. No? And I guess uh, there lies the, the challenge as well in terms of them making, making sure that uh, they are covering all their stakeholders you know, as well as them uh, not being uh, very thin in terms of spreading their very limited resources. Budget-wise, you have here uh, seemingly increasing budget allocation for NCIP. Speaking in 2019 at around 977 million. In terms of expenditure type, you have here those breakdown, including personal services and OOE capital outlay. 
it's just recently that we've seen capital outlay being included in NCIP's uh, budget, and that probably is manifestation of focus as well in terms of uh, their programs and projects being grounded. In terms of uh, program allocation to operations for FPIC and ADS uh, DPP, uh, you have it here. High allocations for operations at around uh, 2012 to 2014. <clears throat> General administration and support and support for, uh, to operations so Sharp increases in 2017 after admin turnover. There is ample resources given to field operations, uh, but should have commensurate technical capacity from agencies uh, and its uh, personnel during utilization implementation. So in terms of allocated budget per sub program, you have it here. Top, uh, the top funded uh, sub programs are implementation of social, economic, and cultural development projects. Human and Economic Development Services, Indigenous Peoples and Cultural Communities Policy Services, funded the activities. Number one is the implementation of socioeconomic and cultural development rights at around more than three billion. General management and supervision at more than one billion, and policy formulation, planning, coordination, and research uh, projects at around. Um, 637 million. There is a seeming uh, central concentration of um, resources. With, uh, if you're going to compare, for example, the NCIP central office with uh, those provided to sub regional offices, well, sub national offices. And um, in terms of other observations, per expensive. Expenditure type central concentration with around 3.34 billion budget on personal services per program, central concentration with 2.82 uh, billion budget on operations. In terms of sub programs, general management and support services, that's bigger allocation than ancestral land and domain titling services. Per object of expenditure, you have MOE, capital outlays, fixed expenditures and personal services with personal services being higher than MOE. So I guess NCIP as an institution is well staffed and uh, well, they are paying for it in terms of uh, their yearly requirement for personal services. Trend of approved uh, CADIS and IP rights holders, you have it here. Um, in terms of um, the IP rights holders, you have CAR as the highest, no? but uh, in terms of area coverage of, of uh, Endowed got these. Uh, it's, it's not that high you know, compared to the other regions. Region 11, Region 12, uh, they have <coughs> very high um, areas uh, for got this coverage, and as well as very high numbers for IP rights holders. If you're going to look at the umbrella organizations, During the years where um, there had been uh, high numbers of CATIs uh, and uh, high numbers of IP rights holders as well, we'll see that um, probably the golden years were uh, the grounding of the IPRA was uh, during the time of when it's, the NCIP was under the ANR as the umbrella uh, department. So that's around 2008, 2010. In terms of difficulty in accomplishing CATI targets, you have it here. You know, in terms of all the other targets, I think NCIP has done very well. Uh, they have higher accomplishment compared to targets. The only uh, targets were they have less you know, in terms of accomplishments where the percent of CATIs, CATIs awarded, the compliance with existing ADSDP, ADSDPP, as well as uh, approved uh, CATI CALTIs within the year. That says a lot because uh, those are major indicators of uh, success in terms of uh, NCIP counting its uh, mandated uh, functions as, as, as espoused by policy. 
FPIC wise, we have a very encompassing uh, process flow here. And if you can see, I think this is substantial. And probably there are two phases to this. The substantiality of something like this is also uh, part of the complexity in terms of grounding it and eventually getting the right consensus among IP communities as well as IP uh, individuals themselves. FPIC concerns, there is delay in the provision of guidelines, first issued in two, uh, 2006 and then revised in 2012. Processes are costly. Uh, community assemblies are mostly represented by council elders, and so we are not seeing really proper representation among uh, well, the base of the IP communities in some cases. Consensus only need majority of the votes for some regions and CIP offices are not endowed enough to reach um, and leverage all IB communities. FPIC process does not validate the, the legitimacy of an indigenous political structure, possibly compromising the consent process. And this is very important in terms of concerns we're looking at eventually. FPIC as a tool itself in terms of getting consent from IP communities is very important. But if the IPS uh, is not really, well, is questionable, then probably the end result of the process is also questionable. There is sparse IP representation. Supposedly, uh, there are uh, IP representations in several levels within the bureaucracy, national, subnational, subregional, municipal, barang barangay, and local levels. But uh, we have yet to see really IP represent representatives uh, leveraging the very much uh, bounded uh, authority given by law in terms of them mixing up with the other represent, uh, representations in those uh, bodies and units down the line. There are several programs for capacitation and empowerment, as you can see here. Educational assistance uh, development programs, school mm, of living traditions uh, of NCCA, Philippine Indigenous Peoples Ethnographies, or Pipes, which I don't think has been passed, and social protection programs of government, academy, and uh, CSOs. <coughs> so we have here our case study sites and uh, seeming analysis or summarized version of the core rights that we looked at. We have CAR, we have Davao, we have Iluido. For, uh, for CAR, probably, the most evident uh, manifestation of uh, deeper grounding is a very empowered IP uh, organization in, 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 in the CAR NCIP. We have seen a very well articulated uh, leadership at the regional level, and uh, that is manifested in terms of grounding policy as well. For Davao, <coughs> we have strong local network among IP leaders. Yeah? And I guess uh, our very own DATU that's uh, going to, to be one of our reactors later on will, will be a testament to this. For Iloilo, we have seen uh, the less endowed version of uh, an NCIP regional office, it covering as well two regions. And it uh, still yet to cover um, a certain uh, section of the targeted population of IPs. So we've talked to IP is yet to be accredited by NCIP. So we have a lot in terms of articulated issues and concerns. Uh, we are looking at welfare and compensation. We are looking at tenorial security. We are looking at access to services, policy provisions, legal support, security, militarization, insurgents within uh, ancestral domains. Implementation and grounding, institutional support and collaboration. So the landscape is complex. We have a very, I think, a very comprehensive policy in place, although it's not perfect. But uh, in terms of what we have right now, grounding that policy over several decades, we have uh, a very complex uh, uh, situation or environment for, for IPs as well as IP policy grounding. Thematic concerns and recommendations. So if you're going to look at recognition, control, management of ancestral domains, including their governance, what we can look at going forward are well, the complete documentation of IPs, ICCs, IE, um, 
and that includes uh, looking at uh, the settlers there, the populations, the communities, and their profiles. Enhancing and capacitating IPS, uh, indigenous political uh, structures, as well as indigenous political organizations. Among those we talked to, these are probably the, the sources of well-articulated individuals among IP communities. And if you're going to have proper leveraging, you need these kinds of individuals you know, being part of the process and then being able to articulate the requirements of IP communities. Strengthen community organizing among indigenous peoples and indigenous culture communities. If you're going to look at uh, what you have local population wise, it's very important to have them, uh, well, the, the mass base of, of IP communities involved in, in all the processes related to um, FPIC or grounding policy. NCIP's capacity to deliver its mandate needs to be also uh, revisited. Um, moving forward, we can look at restructuring, for example, the educational assistance program that they have for eventual professional service of IP communities, augmenting as well financial resources allocated to this. <clears throat> Ensure inclusion and complementation with other government <clears throat> programs. Coordinating anthropological research, demographic, genetic black work with academe and other sectoral agencies, uh, committing to be long-term human capital investment to increase technical personnel, including social scientists, engineers, and legal support, allowing non-IP technical personnel to aid in CATI application processing, as well as FPIC negotiations. So NCIP. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, is substantial organization-wise. You just have to tweak uh, the organization probably in terms of uh, its composition. Or NCIP needs more technical people who are able to, for example, to do uh, geodetic uh, engineering work or social-related uh, research and work. In terms of ecological integrity concerns with ancestral domains, <coughs> we look at... Uh, Harmonizing policies and regulations within DNR, LGUs, and other government institutions. We look at ensuring application of, of appropriate indigenous knowledge and practices in preserving ecological integrity as well. Non compliance and violation of the FPIC process. We can look at uh, augmenting legal and adjudication support, IPs, as well as the NCIP offices. And look at also ensuring compliance by government uh, offices in enforcing the FPIC requirement. Number five, IP, ICC welfare and access to government services. Moving forward, we can promote equitable structured distribution of aid and royalties among IPs and ICCs. This is very evident, for example, in areas with mining uh, concessions. We are looking at just uh, a few families benefiting, for example, from royalties coming from mining operations with a lot of their base population uh, suffering from hardship. Ensure proper rep uh, representations in bureaucratic platforms, pursue development and land productivity options in accordance with IPRA and IP rights, pass the PIPES program, uh, do demographic, uh, demographic survey to identify gaps in, in access to services per ethno-linguistic group. In terms of awareness on IP rights, uh, we should conduct IEC, more IEC campaign, provide orientation on IPRA provisions among um, not only the very obvious uh, stakeholders, but uh, probably among uh, the majority of government agencies that we have, agencies facilitating development projects and being grounded subnationally, the academe and the private sector as well. We can also look at enhancing interface uh, of IPRA provisions with other policies. In terms of self-determination and right uh, to culture of IPs, uh, we can go for faster facilitation of CATI delineation, uh, which can be uh, outsourced no, to outside technical uh, entities just to facilitate the process. Mm -hmm. Reinforce effort to document the cultural structures and mechanisms of IPs and ICCs as these uh, help them ensure claims and legal rights, 
increase leverage of IPRA in related legal processes and documentations, and push for the declaration of legality or insulation of IPs, ICCs against security issues and state conflicts. There are, I guess, uh, a lot of complications. Uh, we're going to look at policy grounding IPRA wise. But um, I think the landscape is also rich in terms of entry points for intervention in terms of us helping IP communities, IP individuals, and them getting uh, what's due to them, uh, and then actually being accorded uh, the rights uh, they should have. And that's the final slide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sunny. Actually, you still have uh, some minutes left. But uh, okay. thank you very much. Yes. Probably I'll close. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Yes, go, go so, ahead. So, yeah, um, I think looking at IPRA uh, was one of the most. Uh, uh, looking at IPRA was one of the most uh, interesting uh, studies that we had in recent years. And really, it grounded so many of our uh, thoughts before no, when we were looking at the other uh, ecological integrity related concerns no? and related policies. So IPRA wise, uh, we looked at a very specialized uh, population of stakeholders. And these are supposed, these are uh, individuals and communities that are supposed to be accorded so much in terms of law and also in terms of our constitution. But um, going down there, going to the remote communities, we'll see a lot of entry points for potential uh, improvement. No? Policy grounding wise, or even in terms of us going there, providing them with uh, several development related opportunities. So, I guess uh, NCIP, not only NCIP, the national government, all the other uh, members of the bureaucracy probably have their own roles no, in terms of us, including us, no, in terms of us looking at uh, IP related welfare concerns and us also doing our part in terms of trying to better what they have right now, try mm -hmm. to better. Their livelihoods, their opportunities, and probably try to better their future eventually. So that's my final uh, statement, Kayla. So you can go to the um, panel uh, reactions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sunny. And actually, that is essentially the main point of this conversation that we have right now. So we can come up with um, um, ways on how we can better the lives of uh, of our uh, indigenous uh, uh, cultural communities of our indigenous peoples and as what you have uh, emphasized there are still a lot of entry points no for improvement um still a, a lot of scope for enhancement and uh, we will hear from our um, discussants uh what they think about uh, the, uh your the study that you presented and uh they may also have the uh, we are also looking forward to their insights no on uh ways forward um for um the ipra and other related policies and for the N ncip as the uh main uh body main government uh body task to implement um the ipra okay so uh, friends, to enrich our discussion and uh, provide an opportunity to react to the study's findings and recommendations, and as I've mentioned, to give their insights on how we can improve government structures and implementations of policies for indigenous peoples, we invited representatives from government, uh, civil society, and of course, our IP sector. And our first discussant uh, represents the National Commission on Indigenous Peoples. She's a graduate of a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering and uh, a licensed civil engineer. And she also holds a master's degree in public administration from the University of Santo Tomas. She worked as a development management officer at the uh, Office for Northern Cultural Communities before joining the NCIP as director of the office uh, on plan policy planning and research. She's a member of the Isinai Indigenous community and has in fact authored a book about her group and uh, the publication is titled The Isinai Cultural Community and the Government Efforts to Develop It and Preserve Its Culture. 
I now give you Director Mary Grace Bozen, Bozen of uh, NCIT. Ma'am, the floor is now yours. Yeah. Mabetsi ikaw, ira yun lumaan, isang yung pagbati po ng mga isinay. Uh, good afternoon to everybody and happy Indigenous Peoples Month. Um, we are here uh, with me, our, our chairperson, Alan Kapuyan, Commissioner Norberto Navarro, Commissioner Kayat, Director Hazel Lucas, and some of us are in the Facebook watching. Yeah. And CIP thank the PIDS for coming up with their recommendations and conclusions on their research study, since this will give us a leverage to request for a better resource in terms of fund and manpower. Uh, we will present our consolidated directions based on the recommendations and conclusions of the study. Uh, we actually have so many inputs, but due to time constraints, we reduce the contents of our presentation. I will just delve on our inputs and included in these slides or the PIDS recommendations and conclusions for reference. Next slide, please. Yeah. On the recognition, awarding, and management of ancestral domains, we have started to craft database with uh, the list of titled ADs, ALs, funded and ongoing delineation process, the CADCs and CALCs from DNR, and identified AD, AL with no application and as ways forward. And CIP will complete the database and implement its ancestral domain information system. Next, please. And CIP is in the process of updating and completing its records on all ADs and AL areas in the Philippines. And as we forward with the meager fund for the delineation and titling of AD, piggy, piggybacking is resorted to. Uh, the NCIP shall hire ad additional geodetic engineers and top expert services of drone operators. Next, please. Yeah. Following the provisions of the IPRA, NCIP is ensuring that titled ADs and ALs are recognized and emphasizes the principle of native title. The CEB, as we forward, the CEB will issue a certification recognizing ADs and ALs after the conduct of validation for the ICC's IPs. Next, please. Okay. The NCIP is not dependent on CADT and CALT applications only. In fact, it identified uh, ADs, AL areas without CADT and CALT application. And as ways forward, NCIP will lobby to ad for additional funds for the delineation and titling of AD and AL areas. Next, please. Yeah. NCIP hired an anthropologist to conduct participatory action research with NCIP staff and IPUs, employing the SWOT and other approaches to gather ethnographies. And NCIP has its master plan that was formulated by the IPs through the consultative conferences in Luzon, besides Mindanao, apart from the STPPs developed by the IPs. Next, please. Yeah. Culture of research is done in almost all activities of the NCIP, but lack of funding makes it difficult to pursue research programs. So, ways forward, we have to request for additional positions and budget. Next, please. CADTIS, CALTIS approved by the Commission should be respected by other agencies regardless of its non-registration with the ROD. And as we forward, NCIP will continue to lobby with LRA to register CADIS with the annotation of Section 56 of IPRA. Next, please. Uh, the CADIS must be registered at, uh, at uh, the ROD before it will be awarded to the community. And as we forward, if CNOs are required, concerned agencies is given 30 days to act on the 
requirements. Otherwise, the criticality shall be registered by the LRA are all these subject to section 56 of APRA. Next, please. Now, the indigenous political structures documentation is a priority considering the institutionalization of the ancestral domain management office in all ancestral domains. We forward the ADMO, uh, the ADMO funding support for the next five years is critical in ensuring IP management of their ancestral domains. The NCIP strategic plan framework for 2023 to 2028 as developed shall be implemented. Next, please. NCIP is a member of the TWG that drafted the substitute house bill number 7811, which reinforces the APRA, addresses issues and concerns on intellectual rights, proposes the creation of a sui generis regime for the protection of ISIS, IPs, CIR, and their ICSPs. It recognizes the traditional cultural heritage of ICCs, IPs, both tangible and intangible, and aims to support traditional knowledge, traditional arts, and artisans for their contribution to their cultures, na national heritage, and social and economic development. So we have to lobby for the approval of the law. Next, please. Yeah, NCIP coordinated for the approval of appropriate uh, expertise positions. However, only few legal positions for the central office were approved. Rationalization and reorganization of plans were submitted but not approved. And it has also requested it also requested for the creation of additional offices and positions. Please forward, we have to seek approval to appropriate uh, oversight agencies for additional plan positions and strength and coordination with CSC to expedite the validation of appointments and complete all unfilled, unfilled positions. Next, please. NCIP employed 91 graduates in 13 NCIP regional offices. Uh, the Administrative Order Number 5 series of 2012 states that AAP scholars render professional service to NCIP and IP communities. AF graduates are engaged in PARSWOT or in participatory action research on the fulfillment and non-fulfillment of the 36 specific IP rights. Please forward, NCIP will continue to hire qualified AF graduates to vacant positions in all NCIP offices. Next, please. <clears throat> yeah, in, in FY 2014, the project funds were directly released to all regional offices through the GAA as a release document for the implementation of 10 sub-programs of the three core programs. Our ways forward, uh, we enhanced and proposed uh, our PREXI for 2023 and beyond. That includes four core programs aligned to the four bundles of rights with 17 sub-programs in operations where specific IP identified PAPs in the IPMP or the IP master plan, the strategic plan that uh, consists of the SDPPs, the strategic workflow framework, the 11 building blocks, shall be prioritized by the IPs for funding to fulfill the specific uh, rights of the IPs. Next, please. Since the enactment of the IPRA, only 25% of the NCIP's core programs were accomplished due to the limited funds. Interventions requested to augment funds in ORGAA were continuously denied. Please award, we have to engage with stakeholders for funding of the project's activities for the IPs. We have to partner with other government agencies as co-implementor of projects. Next, please. The COA has rendered unqualified opinion on NCIP annual audit report for FY 2017 to FY 2020. This is the highest opinion an auditor can render. The audit findings or observations reflected in the annual audit report issued by the COA had no material impact to affect the opinion of the COA auditor. 
uh, recommendations to the audit findings and observations stated in the study were all were also complied. And as a ways forward, proper trainings and seminar of the personnel in charge of the property, plant, and equipment, processing of financial claims, and preparation of financial reports be conducted. Next, please. The FKC process is in accordance with the decision-making process of the community. And ways forward, uh, there's an ongoing review to improve the FPIC guidelines. And there's a continuous IEC on the IPRA and other related laws to the I for the ICC's IPs. Next, please. Yeah, a TWG reviews the FPIC guidelines to properly implement the FPIC process in compliance with the ARTA and the EVOS. Uh, ways forward, the NCFP proposed ancestral domains land protection and management division to assist the ICC's IPs protect their ADs and ALs. Next, please. The FPICN EPR facilitation and MOA implementation and monitoring included a sub program to the proposed 2023. Program Expenditure Classification, or PREXI. There are also NCAP guidelines on the documentation and confirmation of indigenous people, indigenous political structures, and accreditation of indigenous political organization. Mm, Shokos orders were also issued to government uh, Agencies and private companies are individuals who are non-compliant to FPIC process. And as we forward, uh, we continue to continue the capability building of the IPUs, the IPMRs, and leaders of the ancestral domains. Next, please. Yeah. Still on FBIC, the FPIC guidelines provides uh, opportunity for the project to be explained. It allows the ICC's IPs to invite private individuals or experts that may assist them. The community is not uh, limited to a number of consultations within which to give a decision. Please forward, we have to continue uh, conducting IEC and capability building activities, partnership with IBP for legal assistance, and we have to seek assistance from PAO for legal concerns that cannot be handled by NCIP legal officers. Next, please. Uh, NCIP has been giving orientations and lectures to different stakeholders on IPRA and IP culture sensitivity. And we have to continue the IEC and capability building activities, especially for the newly installed elect elected officials in IP areas. Next. We have 32 indigenous people's structures confirmed and two are still for confirmation. Um, the NCIP also conducted uh, 72 provincial leveling off that promote the <coughs> establishment of an ADMU to strengthen the IPS of the ICCs and IPs. And we have to continue confirming the IPS. Next. The Commission is constantly coordinating and collaborating with other government agencies and private sectors to access opportunities and services that would improve their socioeconomic conditions. We also have the DOH, NCIP, and DILG, uh, JMC 2013-01, which is the guidelines on the delivery of basic health services for ISIS IPs, and develop the IP strategic plan for health to operationalize the JMC. So we continue partnerships with other stakeholders through MOA, MOA, MOC, MOP for sustainable project engagements. Next, please. <clears throat> uh, 
there are more or less uh, 5,000 IPMRs in the barangay, city, municipality, and provincial councils. And some local government gover governments resisted IPMRs in their councils due to political and fiscal issues. And we have to conduct conventions on ICC's IP empowerment, IPS documentation process, certificate of confirmation protocol, and IPMR national and regional issues in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Next, please. And see, we collaborated and forged 143 MOA, MOU, uh, MOC with different stakeholders. And we have to continuously coordinate with stakeholders to ensure inclusion of IPPAPs and augmentation of meager funds of NCIP. Uh, there must be a review of the DBM fiscal policy regarding the PS ceiling and provide uh, categor categorical exemptions for IPMRs. Next, please. <clears throat> The EO70 or the Rule of Nation Approach and Good Governance to NTF LCAC facilitates the delivery of basic and socioeconomic services for the ICCs and IPs. The NCIP as a base forward through the NTF LCAC shall implement the Barangay Development Program in cleared barangays with the, within the ADs. Next, please. So NCIP uh, developed uh, we are now in the conclusion um, of the piece, and here are our comments and risk forward. The NCIP developed the IPRA IRR in 1998, and to date, there are already 18 administrative orders formulated and ground truthed. After the approval of policy, capability buildings are conducted for its efficient and effective implementation. This forward NCIP ensures that uh, all policies are understood by all its personnel, the stakeholders, especially our IP brothers and sisters, and are regularly updated and enhanced by introducing innovations to suit the needs of the changing time. Next, please. <clears throat> okay. The NCIP proposed and submitted to DBM its human resource interventions and additional plantilla positions for funding. As of this date, there are there were one uh, regional office, two provincial offices, two community service centers, and three divisions at the central office, which were approved. Okay. And as we forward, uh, NCIP is currently enhancing the program expenditure classification of the EPREXI by adding one for uh, programs. It, it must continuously conduct its human resource inter interventions back to back with activities, projects to maximize resources and to virtual platform. We have to follow up approval of the Office of the President of the creation of the Foreign Assisted Projects and International Relations Office and Administrative Office. And for this year, the NCIP has also submitted requests for <coughs> staffing modifications and additional provincial offices, community service centers, and plantilla positions. <coughs> next, next please. Statutes to protect the indigenous peoples, their ancestral lands, and the integrity of their culture require social mobilization and advocacy in several fronts. All activities in relation to NCIP mandates on IP representation, IPS confirmation, and IP accreditation have their own built-in mechanisms of IEC. So we continue to use virtual and social media platforms to involve IPs in policy development and activities. Next, please. <clears throat> yes, uh, there were more than 72 leveling off sessions in all provinces and cities involving all stakeholders and interest groups on issues concerning indigenous peoples. As ways forward, uh, 
we have to institutionalize the follow through activities with um, consistent in advocacy and social mobilization among stakeholders with real time feedback per issue and per agency. On the policy overlaps and tenure conflicts, we have these comments and ways forward. LRA should allow the registration of CADPIS and CADPIS subject to the annotation of Section 56 of APRA. And as of now, there are 199 CADPIS with 5,851,353 to be registered. Is that a warning, Ma'am, or time of Yes, ma'am, that's a warning. Uh, you have uh, five minutes left, ma'am, to uh, finish your presentation. Sige, ma'am. Thank you. Also, titles issued by DNR and DAR are being registered by LRA, ROD, without CNOs issued by NCIP pursuant to JAW 1. No notification to NCIP by DNR <clears throat> prior to processing of applications for land titles and Issuance of CLOAS in ADs without FPSC, the beneficiaries are not IPs or not even from the ADs. And we forward. We have to continue to lobby with LRA to register CADTIS with the annotation of Section 56 of IPRA. We have to continue to submit updated data in the master list of ADA areas as well as shape files of approved CADT to DNR, DAR, LRA, and DWDAs and lobby with LRA to require other agencies to submit CNO certificate non-overlap issued by NCIP before the <clears throat> title shall be registered in compliance to Jawan. NCIP will also continue to endorse the LR to LRA ROD CADTIS for registrations with LRA CNO and <clears throat> with annotation of Section 56 of IPRA. <clears throat> Next, please. Yeah. NCIP conducted trainings for its personnel on research and documentation, searching questions and answer, genealogy documentation, data triangulation to gather the required data and information that should be produced and, pro and proven per the APRA and the guidelines. Now, uh, NCIP commissioned an anthropologist to conduct the participatory action research employing the SWOT and other approaches with NCIP staff to gather ethnographies and data and information as regards the fulfillment and unfulfillment of the 36 specific rights under the four bundles of rights uh, of the IPs in, their, in the 80s. Please forward, we have to continue the capacitation of NCIP personnel by conducting trainings and also conduct uh, Culture of research through PARSWOT in 101 ICCs. Next, please. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Despite all odds, with the meager resources that NCIP has, it has accomplished significant milestones and achievements. Next, please. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, uh, we have here the, the Philippine map showing the approved cuttings on process studies and identified ancestral domain areas and other statistics. Next, please. Yeah, we have other significant accomplishments as shown. Next, please. We have the IP master plan, the strategic plan, the strategic work workflow framework anchored in the 36 specific rights under the four bundles of rights under the IPRA 1997, which supports and implements PAPs that strengthen and operationalize the 11 building blocks. Next, please. We also have this NCIP strategic communication plan and NCIP strategic master plan framework for, of 2023 to 2028. Next, please. Now we have the project EPAN now, uh, uh, EPAN's three coffee table books that documented the IP profile, their way of life, and destinations found in the ancestral domains. And next, please. Yes, this is our three key takeaways. Ground-truthed policies and plans for effective and efficient implementation, 
collaboration to ensure inclusivity of IP rights to stakeholders, pubs, and commitment to recognize, respect, promote, and protect the ICC's IP rights. So these are the three summaries of our actions. Thank you. And thank you very much, uh, Director uh, Boisin. Um, thank you for uh, giving a, give, giving us an update on uh, uh, what uh, the NCIP is uh, doing um, in response to the uh, comments or has is planning to do in response to the comments and uh, the recommendations of the PIDS study. We appreciate very much your uh, responsiveness to um, um, the, the, uh, the PIDS study. Okay. So at this point, friends, let's hear the reaction of our discussion from the civil society sector. And we are pleased to have with us um, the Center for Environmental Concerns, uh, Philippines, uh, an environmental non-government organization that focuses on providing services and empowering communities to help build a balanced and healthy environment and uh, the CEC is being uh, represented uh, at this webinar by Mr. Jordan M. Fronda, Research and Advocacy Program Coordinator. Uh, we requested um, Mr. Fronda uh, not just to comment on the study but also to share uh, CEC's programs and initiatives to promote the welfare of our indigenous peoples and protect the environment. Um, Mr. Fronda, Sir, the floor is now yours. Okay, salamat Sheila. Ayan, pwede na ako mag-share. Ayan. Uh, salamat sa introduction. So, uh, magandang hapon sa lahat. Uh, gaya na nabanggit ni Sheila, uh, CEC ay isang NGO, environmental NGO na closely naki, uh, nagtatrabaho kasama ang mga communities para tulungan sa gitin ang kalikasan. So definitely sa mahigit 30 years ng CEC, um, madalas kami, madalas namin makatrabaho ang iba't ibang indigenous people sa bansa. So um, Kadalasan, ang mga issues ng indigenous people na naririnig namin ay at sa mga big industries. So yung relations nila with big industries uh, dahil ang indigenous peoples ay nakadikit sa kalikasan. Ang buhay nila, uh, dun sila kumukuha ng pagkain, uh, yung culture nila naka-embed sa mga ancestral domains nila. So ang uh, Kaya kapag may pumasok ng mga malalaking industries, malaki yung disruption na nangyayari sa, sa buhay nila, kahit sa culture nila. Um, ayun. So kaya naman, mahalaga yung uh, tutukan yung issue ng kalikasan para matugunan din yung issues ng uh, mga IPs dahil healthy environment ay ibig sabihin healthy rin yung environment na ginagalawa ng IPs at conversely, yung mga IPs ay mahalaga rin na i-address yung mga issues nila at makakatulong yun para mas madaling uh, mapangalag mapangalagaan at masagip ang kalikasan. Ayan. So, um, nag-prepare ako ng tatlong key points. Ayan. So, nandito siya sa maikling presentation na ito. Uh, karamihan dito ay magiging uh, in relation sa work namin uh, with additional insights Ayun. So, bago tayo pumunta sa first point, uh, sabihin ko lang na uh, napakaganda ng study. Uh, personally, uh, may mga natutunan pa rin ako na mga bago, bagong ideas at uh, very relatable para sa akin, para sa amin sa CEC, yung mga points na nabanggit dito. Uh, so, ito yung unang key point. Uh, mga indigenous people ay may tuturing na national minorities mula noon hanggang ngayon. So, uh, na, naisip ko tong key point na to dahil may nabanggit sa study na merong mga policy delay, although 1997 pa ang IPRA, pero may mga policy delay sa pag amend sa mga guidelines, ganyan. Uh, 
Pero kung i-compare natin ito sa so kasama dito sa mga inaamend dito ay yung guideline sa CADB. Pero kung i-compare natin ito sa mga pagbibigay ng title sa mga mining companies, sa mga plantations, sa mga logging concessions, uh, way before 1997, meron nang in place na pagbibigay ng titles. So kumbaga na una, yung uh, pag, pagkakaroon ng formal titles para sa mga businesses na naturally nag encroach sa mga uh, ancestral domains kesa doon sa pagsisertify ng mga ancestral domains. So, um, imagine natin, abang noon na uh, wala pang titles ng ancestral domains, tuloy-tuloy nagkakaroon ng titles para sa mga companies na nakakasira sa environment. Habang yung mga IPs natin, uh, wala silang pinangahawakan na legal document. So, uh, yung culture lang nila, yung sama-sama nilang, uh, yung organizations nila, at syempre, uh, natatalo sila most of the time doon sa mga legal uh, proceedings doon sa mga businesses. <clears throat> Kaya naman, uh, naturally, ngayon, para tayong naghahabol na lang na, oh, isa-certify natin na uh, ancestral domains yan, pero uh, karamihan ng mga ancestral domains o oh, maraming mga ancestral domains ang meron na mga titles ng mining, ng logging, o iba pa nga tapos na nga mag tatapos na yung titles nila doon so matagal na sila nakapag-operate ayun <clears throat> so kaya naman uh, itong point na to uh, matuturing si ng national minorities uh, national minorities uh, yung masasabi ko na politically correct term para sa indigenous people so nire-reflect ng pagiging minority yung pagiging marginalized nila so uh, for the longest time, na unang ma-prioritize yung mga businesses kaysa doon sa uh, isecure yung mga rights ng mga IPs. And so maraming, uh, meron kaming ilang mga areas na closely na, nakatrabaho namin na may mga ganitong kwento na may mahabang history ng pag-encroach ng mga mining companies. At ayun, uh, ngayon, uh, sobrang entrenched na nung mining company, napakalaki na niya, na para bang mahirap na siyang, mahirap na mabawi yung mga ancestral domains na nasakop niya. Halimbawa nito yung sa Bidipio sa Nueva Vizcaya at sa Itogon na napakaraming mining companies. Okay. So, sa susunod na point, uh, kinakailangan ng pagtutulungan ng NCIP, iba pang mga sangay ng gobyerno at ng mga komunidad para maprotektahan ang IP rights at ang environmental rights. Uh, itong point na to ay dahil doon sa makikita natin din sa study na napakaraming issues. Bukod pa din sa uh, pag-certify ng ancestral domains, uh, pag-recognize, uh, pag-define sa mga IPs, sa labas doon sa IP issue itself, marami pang mga uh, mga challenges sa environment, sa human rights. Ayun. So, ilan sa isa sa example ay yung uh, yung mal malaking point, yung mining companies ay natatrump yung mga caddies. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, bukod din sa nagahabol na nga lang tayo ng pag-certify ng ancestral domains, kahit may CAD na, hindi pa rin ensured na uh, mapoprotektahan yung ancestral domains. <clears throat> so, uh, as much as existing le legal challenges go, yung um, namamanifest din nito o malaking manifestation yung ganun na uh, malaking bagay talaga yung business sa Pilipinas at kadalasan nagiging second priority na lang ang IP rights at yung environmental rights. Uh, ayan, so may mga dagdag na challenges nga rin. Uh, nabanggit yung sa CADPs, sa, sa implementation ng FPIC, at sa consent in general. May mga uh, issues din on mga fake IPOs, fake datos. Uh, isa pang dagdag na example dito sa second point na ito, 
Uh, may mga violations perpetrated by extractive industries na binigit. Uh, in line ito sa report ng Global Witness, uh, Global Witness ay isang human rights organization sa uh, international sa international platform. Uh, noong 2016 to 2019, uh, sinabi na around one-third ng ng victims ng killings sa Pilipinas ay indigenous peoples. Uh, victims ng environment-related killings. Ay, so yung mga killings na related sa mga issues ng mining, ng mga logging, ganyan. Ngayong 2020, uh, pang walong straight year na natin na, ng Pilipinas na maging deadliest country sa Asia, for land and environmental rights defenders. At na, nakita rin nila na one-third pa rin ng lahat ng victims ng environment-related killing sa buong mundo ay indigenous peoples. So ito, a completely different parang field siya mula dun sa, sa, sa focus ng study, uh, human rights field na ito. So definitely, kailangan uh, maging, magkaroon ng recognition sa role nila ng, as environmental defenders. Uh, pagdating naman dun sa, uh, sa environment, so may mga issues din sa environment uh, field na kailangan ma-address na makaka-complement para ma-uphold yung IP rights. Halimbawa, yung pagka-coincide nga ng mga mining permits, ng mga logging permits doon sa sa mga ancestral domains. Uh, then, uh, balikan po yung point. So, mahalaga rin yung participation ng communities dahil uh, halos lahat naman ng interventions, lalo na sa environment, ay mahirap magawa nang walang participation, uh, collaboration ng communities. Kaya, ayun. <coughs> So, dito na ako sa last point ko. Uh, ang pagprotekta sa mga karapatan ng mga IPs ay mahalaga para tunay na maprotektahan ang kalikasan. So, in a way, additional point na lang to. Uh, uh, masasabi, uh, masasabi ko na in general, yung issues ng IPs ay heavily kadikit ng issues on business and environment. Parang uh, malaking factor yung business versus IP rights and environmental rights. Parang wala namang ill intent na uh, dahil IP ay siya na target, sadyang yung mga IPs ay nakatira doon sa mga uh, resource-rich na mga areas, sa mga ancestral domains nila. At para makuha yun ng mga businesses, uh, madidisrupt talaga yung buhay ng mga IPs kasabay ng environment. Uh, kaya naman sa ganitong characteristics ng IPs, uh, kinakonsider namin sila na last line of defense ng environment. So, ibig sabihin kapag lahat ay nag-fail na, yung mga legal safeguards, uh, limbawa, uh, binigyan ng permit ang isang mining company na pumasok sa ancestral domains nila. So parang sila na lang makakaprotekta doon sa uh, tinitira nila. So generally, uh, yung mga yung pag-increase ng regard sa mga IPs natin at sa environment, ah, sa mga IPs natin ay mahalaga para uh, ma-increase din yung uh, success doon sa efforts natin para isave ang environment. Uh, ayun, lalo na uh, sinasabi, 80% of the world's biodiversity can be found in indigenous territories. Ayun, so Yun lang naman yung points ko. Uh, maraming salamat po.
Maraming salamat din, Mr. Fronda. Uh, napakahalaga ng mga puntos, ng mga uh, key takeaways na uh, binanggit mo uh, mula sa uh, pag-aaral na ginawa ni na Dr. Uh, Domingo. Ano? Um, very important yung sinabi mo tungkol dun sa um, last line of defense. Sinabi mo ang ating mga IT sa pagprotekta ng ating uh, kalikasan at meron ka rin puntos na sinabi yung pagtutulungan ng NCIT iba pang mga sangay ng gobyerno at mga komunidad upang maprotektahan ng IT rights at environmental rights. Uh, we will have more time to uh, unpack this sa uh, all of these uh, yung mga um, insights sa sinabi mo later during the open uh, forum. Okay. So um, okay. So this webinar is about our indigenous peoples and how uh, our society could make their lives better. And so as our last discussion, let us hear from a member of our IT community. And it is an honor to have with us the chairperson of the Mindanao Indigenous Peoples Conference for Peace and Development. He is from the Obumanubu tribe and a member of the Mindanao Consultative Council. He also sits as an IP representative at the Regional Peace and Order Regional Peace and Order Council of Region 10, as well as the Watershed Management Council of Davao City. He is also the founding chairperson of the Supreme Tribal Council for Peace and Development and a consultant of the National Security Council and the NCIP. Friends, let us all welcome Datu Lipatuan, Joel Unad. Uh, yes, magandang hapon po sa lahat sa ating host na pinakagwapa. Tapos sa ating sekretary sa NCIP with the commissioner and other uh, personnel of the NCIP. So maraming salamat din sa uh, PIDS na nagpasalit ngayon sa uh, webinar uh, activity. Uh, ang presentation ko ngayon, hindi ito masyadong mahaba. Kasi kung tinan natin yung pag-present uh, kanina ni Sir Domingo, uh, mayroong parang apat o limang policy na unang-una nagawa ng American regime yung sinasabi nila na parang separation of the uh, uh, nine Christian and Christian. Ibig sabihin, yung indigenous peoples during 1901 at saka yung Muslim nai-identify ng American uh, policies na ihiwalay sila. No? So, mula doon, hanggang dumating tayo ng uh, uh, 1997 na ang nakikita ko dito kasi Ako ay isang part din ng pag-assert ng ancestral domain policy and the ancestral uh, domain na batas na sana ang IP magkaroon talaga ng recognition at saka pag ng kanyang karapatan. So dito, kung tinan natin, uh, indigenous peoples with the four bundles of rights and the 11 building blocks of the resilient, responsive, and the relevant ICCs and ancestral uh, domain. Next. Meron tayong dalawang point lang na parang uh, pag-usapan natin at saka pag-isipan natin paano ito. Una, itong four bundles of rights na naging specify ito into 36 rights sa IP, uh, IP and IP rights. Pangawa, itong 11 building blocks as resilient and responsive and relevant ICCs and ancestral Dopin. Bakit? Next. Itong four bundles of rights. Please, next. Uh, makikita natin dito na palagi itong pabalik-balik. Kahit NCIP, even other institution, pabalik-balik ito na sinasabi na respect the rights of indigenous peoples. Meron tayong apat na bundles dito kung makikita natin na uh, rights of ancestral domain, lands, right of self-governance and empowerment, and rights to social justice and human rights, and rights to uh, cultural and integrity. Ibig sabihin, isang challenge ito, mula noong nagkaroon ng IPRA ng 1997, ito ang palaging challenge sa lahat. Bakit? Next. Ito yung Basihan, kung mayroong mga implementation, please next. Kung mayroong mga implementation ng kahit ibang-ibang uh, project, 
O kung sinasabi ni Sir kanina yung environmental accountability, andito yan. Unang-una, human rights kailangan makita natin dito sa 11 building blocks. Ano itong 11 building blocks? Una, itong tinatawag na IPS. Ano itong indigenous people's political structure? Ito yung mga tradisyonal na mga leader na yun ang nag sa leadership para mag-manage doon sa kanilang ancestral domain. Itong environment, part sa kanilang management ito. Itong biodiversity, part sa kanilang management ito. Sa complex resolution, part ng management ng uh, IPS ito. Pero sabi ni Sir kanina, maraming nagpakilala na sila daw is leader. Sila daw IPS. Pero ang ginagawa ng isang trebo para makumpirm natin, tanungin natin ang community. Baka naman yung nag-appoint ng IPS, isang mining corporation. Uh, baka naman yung nag-appoint ng IPS, yung isang organization na anti-IP. So mayroon tayong ginagawa na parang validation na hindi yung NCIP ang mag -validate. Ang mag yung community mismo ang mag kung sino talaga ang maging IPS sa kanilang tribo at saka kanilang community. So, ang NCIP, confirmation na lang, certification na lang sa recommendation sa community. Uh, yun ang isang part ng pag-impose uh, pag ng kanyang karapatan sa kanyang self-governance, isang ancestral domain. Next. Please, next. Ngayon, andyan ng IPS natin. Hindi eh, naman po hindi puro IPS. Kaya puro IPS, hindi yan marunong magsalita ng Bisaya at Tagalog. Hindi yan marunong mag-English. Mag-create tayo na isang Indigenous Peoples Organization kung IPO. Na yun ang mag-engage sa NCIP or mag-engage ng any tao na pumasok ng ancestral domain na maintindihan ano talaga yung karapatan ng katutubo. Pero the head of IPO is belong to IPS pa rin, pero medyo nakaangat yung kanyang uh, pag-aaral. So, kailangan yung kanyang I, uh, IPO, ma-register ng check yan para maging legal yung transaksyon. Sa madaling salita, ang IPO yun ang mata, yun ang tainga, yun ang kamay, yun ang paa ng isang organization o isang ancestral domain na napaloob ng isang tribo na parang yun na yung legal personality nila sa isang ancestral domain. Next please. Next. Tapos, ito. Hindi pwedeng mag-claim ka lang ng ancestral domain kahit sa lang ituro-turo mo. Kahit hindi, hindi related sa iyong ancestral domain, may ituro mo sa akin ito. So, makita sa mata mo sa akin ito. Ang ginagawa natin sa IPS, kailangan ma-identify yun. At paano yan ipag-identify yung ancestral domain? Kasi marami nagsabi, ah, ako, ancestral domain holder, pero hindi pala yung genealogy niya Yung historical account niya, hindi pala in relation doon sa history ng ilog, ng tubig, ng puno, ng bato. O, yan, minsan problema ng NCIP yan. O, kasi kapag magsasabi, o, ito yung kultura mo yan, ito, o, okay na yun. Ang, ang challenge dito na sa pag ng ancestral domain, may declaration mismo yung community, yung council of elders based on genealogy and historical account na yung pangalan sa kanyang tribu nakakabit dun sa pangalan ng ilog, pangalan ng kahoy, pangalan ng bundok, yun. So, next please. Ibig sabihin, after na mayroon ka ng ancestral domain, ha, mahirap kung wala kang tinatawag na admo. Kanina, nasabi yan doon sa presentation, may admo. Pero baka sabi-sabi lang na may admo. Pero kami mismo sa community, Na-experience namin na mayroong ADMO. Ano man yung ADMO? ADMO is Ancestral Domain Management Office. Sino ang mag-appoint ng, uh, ng ADMO? Ang mag-appoint ng ADMO, ang IPS. Tapos, ang ADMO yun ang implementor ng lahat ng policy and rules and regulation na nagawa ng IPS. So, ang ADMO yun talaga ang magpatagbo ng development, rules and policies uh, land use plan, yung ADMO ang kailangan mag-implement. Next. Ibig sabihin, after meron kang ADMO, para maging kumplito yung pagtingin uh, pag, uh, kung ano ang dapat na development sa ancestral domain, kailangan meron kang ADS-TPP. 
yung ancestral domain, sustainable and development protection plan. Oh. Bakit meron ito? Kasi yung sabi ni Sir kanina, makita ba doon sa ads DPP na mayroong tiyatawal na environmental protection? Makita ba doon sa ads DPP yung mayroong biodiversity, uh, territory uh, protection? Oh. Kailangan yun. Tapos ito, sa anda banda, pwedeng mag-present mag, uh, mag ng investor for agroforest, uh, for banana plantation, kailangan makikita yan sa HDPP. Sino ang maggawa ng HDPP? Kasali dyan ang community, kasali dyan ang agencies ng mga government, kasali, kasali dyan ang mga institusyon na may concern sa DNR, biodiversity, at saka may concern doon sa iba't ibang concern na iba't ibang mga uh, agencies ng government. Next. Tapos ito, ito, kung tingnan natin na marawa, maraming away dito, uh, yung ancestral domain, magkaroon ng pera. Ito yung, ang ginagawa ng isang community, kailangan klaruhin yung distribution ng pera. Kasi kung minsan, kapag may mining dyan, siyempre may sirang tribo. Sino lang ang makinabang dyan? Uh, hindi ko lang sasabihin kung sino ang makinabang. Yung mas malapit siguro kung kanino. At saka marunong mag-English, marunong mag-Tagalog. Pero how about yung mga katulog andun sa bundok na katira? Oh. So, yun, parang ang ginagawa sa isang community, pinaklaro how to distribute yung money na binibigay kung ano ang dapat ibigay sa kanila. For example, yung, yung pera para pang tanim ng puno. Oh. Pagdating doon, hindi naman tanim ng puno kasi binili ng motor. Kailangan yung maliwanag na policy sa tinatawag na doon sa IP Work and Management for CRDP Formation. Kailangan yan. So, yun ang accountability ng isang ancestral domain. Next. Tapos, ito naman yung pinaka-importante talaga. Parang window ito, gate ito na walang pumasok sa ancestral domain kapag hindi ka magdaan ng FPIC. Kapag hindi ka rin magdaan ng tiyatawag na EPR process sa rules and regulations sa pagpasok ng ancestral domain. Pero ito, bantayan din natin. Oh, itong FPIC. Baka yung mga leader, mga IPS, baka tapos na yung binayaran o oh, ng investor. Baka hindi na yun ang totoo talagang IPS. Hindi na yun ang totoo mga leader. So that is part pa rin ng challenge ng NCIP to validate, uh, to determine sino ba talaga ang totoong leader dyan na pwede namin kausapin na yun talaga ang magperma ng mga, magperma ng agreement na pwede silang pumasok. Yan ang mga proseso na tingnan na, tinignan din namin sa part ng proseso ng tinatawag na FPIC, no? Certificate of Precondition. Next, please. Tapos, makaroon tayo ng tinatawag na IPMR. Ito yung pinakamahirap. Uh, itong tinatawag na IPMR. Batas man ito, pero minsan maging abuso. Pero ang ginagawa natin, yung IPS naggawa siya ng mga policies how to select yung tinatawag na IPS, no? Ang challenge uh, uh, IPMR. Ang challenge dito, kailangan yung IPS magdetermine ano ba yung trabaho ng IPS. No, at saka yung IPMR doon sa isang barangay, doon sa isang munisipyo. Hindi yung IPS, ang IPMR yung magbitbit ng dokumento ng folder papunto ng community para magpaperma o oh, ako ang mag-IPMR. Hindi pwede yan. So yun ang isang parang rules and regulation sa mga, sa mga gusto mag-IPMR para maging part rin sila sa representative doon sa barangay na kung ano yung bit-bit nilang dapat ilagay doon na agenda. For example, uh, policy in terms of uh, environmental protection. Kasi yung IP sa Dabao City, mayroon silang tinatawag na indigenous sa uh, Uh, Pilisupi for environmental protection. Ang tawag namin dyan, Pusaka. So, mayroon, kung mayroon tayong 705 ng DNR, ang tribo ng Davao City, mayroong siya sabi na Pusaka. Ibig sabihin, huwag kang magpunta dyan. Huwag kang magputol ng puno dyan kasi declared Pusaka yan. So, ibig sabihin, yung tribo mismo, sa isang committee, mayroon na siyang policy to regulate sa, sa mga violator o illegal na mag-entry sa na-declare na yan, hindi pwede pasokan kasi preservation lang at saka biodiversity teritoryo yan. Yung tinatawag namin Pusaka. Next, please. Ito. Yung sabi ko kanina, kailangan may mga memorandum of agreement. Ano yung memorandum of agreement? Para magkaintindihan 
ma-absorb kung ano ba talaga ang mga terms of condition kung magpasok ang isang institution or investor sa loob ng ancestral domain. Next, hindi pwedeng ang, ang isang community o isang ancestral domain, wala siyang alam paano siya mabuhay. Wala siyang alam, alam kung paano ma-elevate ang kanyang hanap buhay on socio-economic. Oh, ang, ang ginagawa ng isang ancestral domain, ang ginagawa na nag-partnership lahat ng mga uh, institusyon na pwedeng makatulong sa ganda para nagawa sila ng agreement na ito ang gawin natin. So, may mga community sa Davao City na mayroon na silang parang uh, government, uh, government socio-economic appletment ngayon. Kompleto sila. Yun ang laman ng tinatawag na uh, 11 building blocks. Next please. Ito yung last natin sa 11 building blocks. Kanina sabi ni Sir, maraming napatay na IP. Dahil, uh, siyempre, lumalaban sa kanilang karapatan. Uh, may isang community o tribo sa Davao City na mayroon siyang initiative to, to establish the network into PNP, into EFP, o even ang local government na pinakilala na kami. Mayroon kaming tatawag na ancestral domain defense system. Na yung ancestral domain defense system, walang barlid yan, kundi itak lang yun. Hindi yun ginagamit para maghapon ng kriminal doon sa loob, kundi proteksyonan lang yung kanilang ancestral domain para mawalang mga, uh, mga violator na magpasok sa kanilang ancestral domain. So ito yung mga challenge sa ating NCIP, even sa other government agencies and international place next. Ang isang challenge dito, uh, sinasabi dito, <clears throat> in the general, if the 11 building blocks are not implemented properly, an NCIP reason to exist will cease and the IP's lives, village, institution, spiritual, will be in, in the lands they own, occupied, and use will uh, negatively be affected. Pangalawang challenge, Support in the implementation of the 11 building blocks will bring to fruition the purpose of the enactment of an EPRA, correcting the historical injustice in the recognition, respect, protection, and promotion of ICC IP rights. Itong pang last, it also emphasizes that ancestral domains are privately owned by the ICC's IPs and cannot be bawal ibinta bawal din sana i-destroy and that ICC's IPs have the right to manage the same in accordance with their constitution, tradition and constitution so itong presentation na ito isang challenge hindi lang for the isang ahinsya ng guberno, kundi for pangkalahatan. Ang isang bit-bit ng governance ng isang ancestral domain o isang tribo nakaakibat dito sa 11 building blocks. So marami pong salamat. Daghang kayong salamat sa inyong tanan. At uh, maraming salamat din po uh, datu unad sa inyong uh presentation na no mas lalo pa naming naintindihan ang uh, ang sitwasyon ng mga ating mga IPs at yung uh, yung sinasabi yung 11 building blocks na napaka napakahalaga no para po uh, maprotektahan ma ang inyong uh, well-being as a as a group no okay so makakasama pa natin si Dat uh, si Dato Unad sa ating uh, susunod na uh, parte ng ating um, webinar yung ating uh, open forum okay pero bago tayo tumungo sa open forum no um let us give our um, uh, speakers uh, uh, some time to breathe no before they start uh, answering questions so i'd like to tell you that we won't have a uh, poll today however we will pick uh, three names from our webex participants and each of them will receive a pids notebook and i will announce their names before closing the webinar okay so magtungo na po tayo sa ating uh, open forum uh, marami tayong magagandang katanungan 
mula sa ating mga mula sa inyo, no? Sa ating mga participants. Okay? So, uh, I invite our I now invite our speakers, Dr. Domingo, Director Boasen, Mr. Fronda and Datu Unad and May, may I also welcome, may we also welcome to the panel NCIT Commissioner uh, John Navarro, who will uh, help uh, uh, Director Boasen answer questions, particularly those uh, related to the uh, work, the work of um, NCIT. Okay, so let us now, uh, let me go to the first uh, question. Okay, and um, let me start with uh, the question of Professor uh, Nestor Castro of the UP Diliman uh, Department of Anthropology. Uh, he said, there is a World Bank study titled IPRA, uh, Legal and Institutional Frameworks, Implementation and Challenges, published way back in 2007. But he said, most of the issues, problems, and challenges presented, they are almost the same with the PIDS study findings. There were also recommendations presented in the World Bank study, um, but aside from a few updates in accomplishments, the problems are basically the same. Why is this the case? Have previous studies and recommendations been neglected? Uh, may I uh, direct this uh, question to our to the NCIP? Um, Director uh, Boisin or uh, Commissioner Jong uh, perhaps would like to answer this. Commissioner, please go ahead, sir. What seems to be the problem? Why? Why is it that the same problems keep uh, cropping up? So, mukang <laughs> mukang uh, hindi na susolve talaga yung mga problema ng uh, tungkol sa ating mga indigenous uh, peoples, indigenous cultural communities. Go ahead, uh, no, okay. commissioner. Yes. Kapian uh, panjus Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I, I will not. Uh, the greetings to everyone and no? to all of us, uh, and the honorifics and appreciations to the other guests and other members here. Okay, so the question of the 2000 World Bank study, I have browsed it before a long time ago, so I cannot mm -hmm. remember exactly what's the, what the contents are, but if it's similar to this current study, uh, uh, then I regret to say that it uh, it probably suffers from some... Um, Kulang na data siguro, no? Uh, I appreciate the study so much. I've learned from, so much from it. And I, and I can certainly use it in some of our advocacies, especially mm -hmm. when we go back to the DBM. I especially like the page 40 to 50, which is rather difficult, but that talks about the the financials and breakdowns on mm -hmm. where the money is spent on. No? Medyo mm -hmm. mahirap itindihan, pero na-appreciate ko yung the way it was being studied. Mm -hmm. Without necessarily agreeing with the uh, with the finding, no. But I, like I said, appreciate the study. However, it stems from certain uh, prepositions. For instance, it said that, and it, it was it, they kept it was <clears throat> it was repeated many times in the study, and that's that's why I have to mention it. One being first being that after the two thousand three administrative order, the next one came in. 2012 or 10 years after according to the study but if you read the study itself it is replete with the number of of uh references to other aos of, of the ncip which is several from 2003 2004 2006 2008 2009 even 2002 prior to the 2003 that was managed so meron so in, 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 the, in the basis kasi of some of some of the recommendation is that the NCIP has not been responsive and giving out the proper uh, res uh, appropriate response. So, meron naman, okay? Meron. And to say that it's the same problem, I don't know. I don't think so. Because since 2007, one, more than one-fourth of the country is already titled to IPs. That's a lot of improvement. Compared to the whole world, that's a major, uh, if, if, if we're not the number one, country that recognized IP titles formally, uh, if we're not the number one, I, uh, maybe one of the most number, no? We have 4,013 or so uh, changes day by day, IPMRs or representatives in legislative councils. That's a major achievement. 
So, ang dami pa. 300 plus uh, uh, cooperatives created. Uh, oh, so many FPICs completed, etc. So, it's not the same. It's like Siguro saying we have a crime problem. It's something that's always there. I don't think any country will be able to solve it. But it doesn't mean there are no improvements or there are no successes along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly, some of it is still still holds true. For instance, the budget. Uh, that's a real, real consideration. But uh, I don't think it's it's the same. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Commissioner. So based, kasi based on the presentation of Dr. Domingo, it's not really the lack of policies, no? Kasi kung pulisiya din naman ang pag-uusapan, marami namang mga uh, IP-related policies. So, um, is it pro probably sa, sa implementation ng mga pulisiyang ito? And perhaps uh, the lack of a whole of government approach, and this was actually a question, um, a comment of uh, Roger Garinga. Sabi niya, this, okay, um, um, EO70, the whole of government approach and uh, the role its role in relation to the situation of the ITs uh uh would, can you comment on this uh sorry sige i think you you've raised your hand no is yes. it yung ba yung, na, yung ba yung kulang yung ba yung kulang yung whole of government approach na sinasabi uh sinabi ni merong isang congresswoman na nagsabi parang ginagamit daw ng LCAP ng EO70 yung NCIT Ang alam ko ang NCIT gumagamit sa LCAC eh. <laughs> I'm just kidding, no? But uh, in reality, what will happen is uh, the, the design of, of EO70 or LCAC is a whole of nation approach for good governance, di ba? So talagang there will be interfacing between the all agencies. In fact, that is what's encouraged. And the NCIT has been able to piggyback on that piggyback, but the... Uh, but to really utilize and participate actively in EO70 or LCA. Uh, and because of it, we have been able to achieve many things. Uh, like the, the whole spectrum of services of NCIB talks about the culture, intellectual property, titling, uh, human rights, etc. of the IPs. But we are not funded for all of those. No? For education, we don't have funds, really funds for education for, to make schools. For for interface with local government units. You know, all these things, we rely on the other agencies, the SWD for relief, relief uh, interventions, etc. So that's the whole, that's the whole, that's the whole uh, purpose of EO70. Now, perform good go governance in such a way that insurgency, the causes of insurgency becomes irrelevant. So okay. Yeah. So so that in, that's in summary of the interfa interfacing of uh, LCAC and NCIT. And yes, the whole of nation approach is being used. Okay. Thank you very much, um, uh, Commissioner. We have um, um, other quest other questions here, and we have one uh, from uh, Silver. Silverlin Maghinay Camposano, Director for Instruction at the Davao del Sur State College. What is the exact process of, of, of obtaining the FPIC for student researchers? Are there any other way to get IP approval except the FPIC? The FPIC is for um, development projects, no? So does it, does it, does it cover studies, mga ganito? Siguro ethics approval lang tinatanong niya. Hindi, di ba, sir? Iba yun. Yes, sir, go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, just remember that uh, the NCIP is self-governed and self-determination. So any activity, especially in their land, no? so any activity that affects them requires their consent. Para lang pumasok ka lang sa bahay ng isang tao, magpapaalam ka, di ba? Mm -hmm. O kung interviewin mo yung members ng mga, mga tao doon, mayroon kang research sa kanilang way of life, magpapaalam ko muna. That's a basic concept of FPIC, that's respect, recognition of the rights of the indigenous peoples. So when it comes to research, it's the same thing. However, there are different methods of acquiring FPIC. For depending on the kind of activity, if it's extractive, if it's it may be detrimental to your culture if it's permanent, mm -hmm. it's a minor footprint. 
then there will be a different process followed. So it can be very tedious or it can be very relaxed, depending on the kind of activity. Okay. Thank you for that, um, Commissioner. Okay. I am looking for questions that we can uh, address to uh, our um, other speakers. Uh, okay. Before mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Sunny, Sunny, go ahead. Please yeah, go ahead. Um, yes. Sorry, I was having problems with my audio. Connection. Okay, yeah. okay. Go I'm ahead, back. Sunny. <laughs> yes, so you just, are. Just to address uh, a couple of questions you raised right here. For example, uh, why is it that we have sort of uh, similarities with previous studies? Okay. I guess yes. the details are a bit more complex right now. They are different. But if you're going to look at the four core rights, it's right there. Mm -hmm. So looking at, for example, your ancestral domains, uh, uh, issues, self-governance and empowerment, uh, social justice and human rights, as well as cultural integrity, those are probably up there um, even dec a decade ago or decades ago. And right now it's still there, but uh, you have a different uh, um, detail to, this, uh, to these issues. So uh, that's probably the explanation to that uh, observation. The second one in terms of EO70, uh, we did the study around 2018-2019 and EO70 was actually, I think, um, given out by the Office of the President around the end of 2018. And um, honestly, in 2019, it wasn't really that, uh, that well uh, broadcasted. So we, uh, but having said that, we actually had security issues being raised by some of our FGD participants. For example, uh, we went to um, UP Diliman where they had really a community of uh, LUMADs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of them were students and there were elders as well with them. And yeah, uh, security issues were some of those uh, concerns they had on the top of their list. So uh, that's related to EO70, that's related to NTFL cap, that's related to possibly red tagging of IT communities or individuals. But uh, it's a very complex issue to go into. If we're going to include it in the paper as well. But we touched on, uh, well, the complexities of um, dealing with IT communities, including uh, what's happening right there security-wise. You know? So malaking issue sa kanila yung uh, actually yung, yung red tagging malaking issue din oh, 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 oh. yung ng kanilang Dumad communities even the closing of Dumad schools di ba uh, that was actually mm -hmm. well broadcasted no in, in mainstream media so malaking malaking issue yan uh, but the uh, EO70 itself NTFL cut uh, hindi siya masyadong nasa consciousness natin early 2019 kasi kalalabas lang nung so that's it uh, Sheila thank you Thank you very much, Sunny. Sunny. Okay. Um, we have um other questions here. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, this one. Okay. Uh, from Maris of uh Maris Kabat Nedakar. Why is while there is an observed increasing budget for NCIT over the years, funding is still a key challenge in the implementation of the uh, PAPs especially in the delineation of ancestral domains. Uh, is there a forecast of the financial requirements vis-a-vis um, -vis the number of AD delineation applications? And um, second question uh, from the same uh, participant, are there efforts to formulate regional IT master plans aside from the existing master plans per island? Thank you. Okay. Ooh, um, Commissioner, would you like to answer that or shall we uh, um, have it, you know, uh, Director Guasen, uh, Guasen uh, this time? Director, may we hear from you, ma'am? Did, um, did you hear the question? Hello? Yeah. Director Mary Grace, yes. Yeah, yeah. on the regional IP master plan, Yes, mm -hmm. we already have the regional IP master plan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was consolidated to a national uh, strategic plan. So, meron na po, merong mga ganyan na effort. Effort. Thank oh. you. Okay. And uh, 
Uh, may question din si Maris, is there a forecast of the financial requirements uh, vis a -vis the number of AB ancestral domain delineation applications? So in your planning, ma'am, do you do this sort of, um, you have a forecast of uh, how much you need in terms of finance? Yes. Go ahead, ma'am. Yes. We, annually, we, we have uh, targets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Uh, those are not uh, funded. So we, we usually get uh, the targets from our regional offices who needs uh, the, the aid is to be titled. Mm -mm. But, uh, mm -mm. We are very unfortunate na that our targets or uh, plans are not funded. Yeah, actually, uh, there was even a budget cut on the funding for the delineation and titling in 2015 hanggang 2019. So, yun yung aming... <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Director Boasen. Um, if I may ask you another question, because the study also um, uh, mentioned about uh, the concentration of... Uh, the NCIP's budget on the central office, no? Uh, and and there is minimal allocation for the regional offices. Uh, what can you say about this, ma'am? And uh, director? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Did Did yeah. you hear my question? Yes, ma'am. On yes. the concentration of funds in central office. It also includes um, CMI. What's the CMI? Centrally management, uh, centrally managed items, which are actually implemented in the regional offices. Mm -hmm. But those are those funds are only managed by the central office. But actually, those funds are going to the regional offices for their implementation. That's why mas malaking konte yung sa central office. Yes. Ah, okay, okay. So although although those funds are in the central office, those are being utilized in uh, by the regional offices. Is that what you mean, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you very much for the clarification. Okay, let's move to other uh, comments. Uh, I mean questions. Okay. Uh, this one we have one from um, Adrian Orozco of uh, the DSWD for Peace uh, program. In relation to concerns regarding IT birth registration, may I know the mechanisms of NCIT in ensuring that all ITs have a name and identity? This also directly affects their access to social services. Indeed, you are right, uh, uh, Mr. Adrian. Okay. Uh, Director Boasen, would you like to answer that, ma'am? Yeah. Uh... On the civil registration, we have a partnership with uh, PSA. Mm -hmm. There was an AO administrative order number three of series of 2004. That's about the civil registration. Uh, um, it is really a problem on the IP side since um, they are in far flung areas. So uh, the, 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 the children were born without uh, any registration kasi uh, malayo nga po sila Opo. so mm -hmm. that's an initiative with PSA that uh, uh, we had that administrative order series of 2004 i think that is now being uh, it's now being enhanced by the PSA okay thank you um Maraming salamat, uh, Director Boasen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We have other questions. Uh, uh, and this time it's about the uh, ads PP, no? Or the uh, Ancestral Domain Sustainable Development and Protection Plan. This is from Rosemary Conanan. Um, the ads PP is one great manifestation and assertion of self determination, management, and autonomy by our IPs. How is NCIP doing it 
uh, how is NCIP doing the formulation of this uh, of this uh, plan? Okay, is there an PP example that could serve as success uh, as a model? Could the plans project could the plans projects and proposals come from and be developed by the IPs themselves? Okay. I, I, I saw you nodding your head, uh, sec, um, Commissioner. Thank, thank you. Uh, and that's another thing I'd like to point out about the study. Uh, we have a master plan. Uh, the, the, the most recent one is for 2020, covering 2020 to 2024. In fact, there have been several master plans before that, uh, just to point out that uh, it was not noticed by the study. Uh, and the reason I mentioned that because it's based on the ads DPP of the IPs. The master plan is created by the IPs based on their ads DPP. The ads DPP really emanates from the IPs. Then there is a manual, uh, it's available on the website, on how the ads DPP is formulated. Uh, but certainly it is from the community itself with the support of NCIP, and we even gather resource persons if they need so. Thank you. Okay, but how is the ads PP mainstream into local development plans? Because that's a master, the ads PP is a master plan. Ano? Paano siya naiibaba? And making sure na it's mainstream sa um, plans ng mga local government uh, units. Yeah. There are several methods. No? Uh, the most uh, easy to, to appreciate are the, the submissions to the RDC and, and through the IPMRs, we introduce it to the LGUs. Uh, uh, from the LGUs, uh, we are able to gather the the legislative support of the of the local government units uh, for its implementation and inclusion and consideration in their uh, different instruments, including the land use program. Okay, uh, okay. So you mentioned sir, yung RDC, ano? Um, but uh, Dr. Domingo mentioned that. In most cases, yung IP representation, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sunny, no? yung yes. IP representation is mostly uh, by invitation. That's what um, we found out. Uh, sorry. Uh, there, is, there is the IPMR, no? mandatory okay. representation. Those okay, apps. mandatory representation. Yeah, Thank you for the clarification. But, but your question, Sheila, is really very complex no? in terms of uh, us giving an answer. For example, uh, you're, you're asking how do they mainstream the, the ads DPP? Uh, in in local development plans, no? um, the answer there is is another very big uh, complex. Uh, <laughs> and another study that probably you can I uh, know you can undertake as a part two. Yeah, well, just uh, a very quick answer to that. If you're going to look at the dynamics in terms of LGUs crafting their CDPs, their comprehensive uh -huh. development uh -huh. plans, they are very autonomous in terms of crafting that. Although they they should have that alignment. That vertical alignment coming from the top. You know? For example, it has to be coming from your uh, PDP as the biggest okay. yes. uh, planning document. Down the line, your mm -hmm. RDC document, then your provincial mm -hmm. uh, physical planning and development mm -hmm. framework, and then you go to the city and the municipalities, you know, where mm -hmm. uh, probably mainstreaming should uh, take in effect. You no, know? the ads TPP being considered in crafting your uh, CDPs and CLUPs. Unfortunately. Uh, manifestations of inclusion uh, in so many cases, not only for ads GPP, but also for other thematic uh, planning documents. They are not really well manifested in LGU, CDPs, and CLUPs. Even, for example, uh, manifesting uh, municipal or city uh, development plans in your provincial, hindi siya talaga uh, well manifested in terms of inclusion. So, Yun yung, yun yung, uh, complex answer to that very that's complex right question. that's right yeah thank you very much okay that to unad may we hear your thoughts on this sir in terms of uh mainstreaming sir the um ads ads pp uh actually uh experience ito sa Davao city yung sabi na mainstreaming of the ads dpp the formulation of ads dpp hindi yun parang Yung tribu lang ang nag-iisip paano magkaroon ng HTPP within sa kanyang ancestral domain. The formulation of, of the HTPP, yung concept niya is peace building. Hindi lang yung tribu lang ang nagpaplano, 
Kasi yung ancestral domain, maraming concern dyan. May concern ang local government, may concern dyan ang DNR, even the tourism, and other institution, and, and ang, ang iba pa. Ang ginagawa sa Davao City, based experience namin sa aming tribu sa Ubu Manabu, pag formulate ng ASDPP, lahat inimbitahan. Okay. Sila mismo, to contribute, ano ang ilagay sa ASDPP, based sa kanilang program, sa kanilang ahensya. In terms of mainstreaming sa tinatawag na HDPP, hindi kailangan i-lobby mo pa papunta ng city, papunta ng governor's office, kasi during the formulation of HDPP, andyan na lahat. Kasi yung purpose ng HDPP, yun ang kailangan, yung isang ancestral domain, even yung mga IPS head and the organizational, kailangan may framework sila na yung HDPP is comprehensive. Hindi yung HDPP more on cultural interpretation, more on rights interpretation, kundi yung karapatan lahat sa mga ahensya ng government, even institution, even mga NGO, andyan talaga sila lahat. For example, alam ninyo ang Davao City, ang landmark nila is uh, Philippine Eagle. Alam natin yung Philippine Eagle, maging foundation yan sa buong Pilipinas. Part sila sa pagpaplano, how to, na mailagay doon sa SDPP, how to protect yung Philippine Eagle na andyan sa ancestral domain ng tribu. Kasi andyan yun, nakasulat, andyan din sila, narespeto lahat. Ang, ang ginagawa ngayon, sa enhancement, ano na lang yung kulang. So, sa maling salita, kung makita niyo yung example kanina sa presentation ko, yung national at saka local, yung basihan ng kanilang implementation, yung kanilang existing program, na nakalagay doon sa HDPP. Kasi ang nangyari, hindi sila magbigay ng programa kung hindi sila nag-identify na, oh, sa amin ito, kami ang naglagay dito, kami rin ang magbigay ng programa na ito. Ibig sabihin, yung HDPP, kung i-formulate natin, wala tayong iwanan na isang, uh, isang institusyon na may concern doon sa ancestral domain mo. Wala kang iwanan na governor, wala kang iwanan na uh, city planning, kundi lahat isahin mo yan. Para yung, yung SDPP mo, hindi mo sabihin, oh, bakit ito ba implement? Oo, oh, nag, naghat lang ang DNR. Yung lahat ng implementation sa SDPP, lahat yan. Considerated, considerated lahat. Kasi lahat yun, nakalagay lahat at may participation talaga. Ibig sabihin, yung formulation ng SDPP, huwag lang ikaw-ikaw lang. Huwag lang ikaw lang na tribo. Yung formulation ng SDPP, lahat na concern, uh, international and national community, andyan sila para doon sa implementation. Wala kang sabi mo, oh, hindi pwede, hindi pwede, kasi andyan na lahat yun. Yun ang parang experience namin sa aming SDWP within Davao City. Okay. Thank you ba? Okay. Salamat po, Datu Unad. Meron pa po akong mga ibang katanungan dito at uh, kung maaari po ay sa inyo ko po ito iba to, no? May tanong dito si Mike Waderes, no? Uh, okay, actually marami siyang tanong. Okay, isa, okay. isa dito ay... Uh, yung ano yung kadti posible po bang magkaroon ng higit sa isang tribal association sa isang kadti hello datu oh ah uh, uh, ganito ma'am yung presentation ko kanina yung sa 11 building blocks part yun siya uh -huh. bakit may organizations siya una mayon tayong number 1 yung, yung formulation of IPS as policy maker through cultural procedure Mm -hmm. Pero paano ngayon yung, for example, may pera yung, yung IP, sino yung mag-process? <laughs> Kung may mga dokumento, sino ang mag-drop? Ang mag-drop yun, yung, yung organization, yung association. Tapos yung mag, mag na ng mga kontrata for legal, legality, kasi naka-register ng check yung organization mo, tapos nakakabit doon sa ancestral domain, yun talaga ang mag-undergo ng mga technical, legal, yung tinatawag na association or organization. Pero, the officers of association, lahat yan, member ng IPS yun. Mm -hmm. Member ng organization yun. So, hindi, hindi yan nagkahiwalay sila. Ibig sabihin, pwede mayroong organization, pero kailangan sama-sama lahat, hindi siya hiwalay. Hindi mag-awayan doon sa IPS, hindi mag-awayan doon sa ADMO, kundi isa sila sa isang structure to manage the whole ancestral domain. Yung IPO, tinatawag, association. Ma Thank you, Datu. Oo. May isa pang tanong dito, actually it's from the same person. So kung hindi daw pwedeng ibenta yung yung uh, kadti, pwede bang ilis? Yeah. 
Uh, actually, yung kanina na pasyente, hindi talaga pwede ibinta yun. Pwede, parintahan mo. Pero selected yung lugar, baka yung magpasok doon mining. Mm -hmm. yung, yung lugar pala, hindi pwede yan sa mining. Kami sa Davao City, ma'am, very strict to kami sa pagpasok ng mining. Meron lang kaming lugar na oh, doon lang tayo mag-mining. For example, uh, itong lupa na ito, pwede ito for agricultural. Kasi yung ancestral domain natin, mayroon tayong tatawag na uh, zoning planning. Ano yung pwede ilagay doon? Itong lugar na ito, for agriculture, pwede natin maparintahan ito. Itong lugar na ito, declared itong pusaka o environmental protection, hindi ito pwede ma-develop. Itong lugar na ito, water set ito, hindi pwede ma-develop ito. So, identify lagay yung tagalag yung lugar mo, saan lang ang pwede iparintahan mo sa mga investor na suited sa yung ancestral domain. Opo. Pero uh, dato, kahit na halimbawa, napat, na, naparenta mo siya, ano, na ilis mo siya, yung ancestral domain, dadaan pa rin yun sa kailangan may FPIC pa rin. Yes. Yes. Oh, yung sabi ko kanina, na lahat ng mga pumapasok, kahit sino, oh, magdaan talaga ng FPIC process. Kasi yung FPIC process, yun lang ang pinakamahalagang bagay to process paano may participation yung affected community, ma'am. Doon din maging maging mag, uh, mag uh, participate yung mga council of elders ta oh ano ba yung ano ba ang gawin namin dito ano ba ang decision namin dito so kami naman na medyo may pagkapopsional kami ay mag-interpret into a uh, sariling language na ito i-explain natin ga ito kapag sabihin namin sino lang oh hindi kami payag kasi yung lugar na yan andiyan yung libingan ng mga ninuno ninyo So kami rin, hindi kami pipili. Kahit yun ang gusto ng investor doon ilagay yan, kami hindi rin namin pilitin yan kasi maraming kasalanan, malaki ang kasalanan namin. Kung yung bagay na yan ang sasabi ng uh, mga, uh, mga matatanda, hindi pwede. Yun ang pinaka-importante sa tinatawag na FPIC process. Okay. Dato Unan, may representasyon po ba ang IT sa mga sa pamahalaang lokal? Actually, Dato... marami. Yes, ma'am. Yes po. Yes po, sir. Ah, actually, marami pong salamat sa sabi mo pamahal, pamahala ang lokal. Sa, sa amin, within Davao City, natapos yun lahat. Even sa city and province, barangays and municipal, andyan yun lahat. Mayroong IP, uh, na IPMR representative. Pero yung kaibahan dito, na hindi yung IPMR namin na nilagay doon, na yung gobernur ang nagbit-bit naglagay doon. Hindi yung mayor. Kundi yung process ng pagpili ng isang IPMR as representative doon sa munisipyo, yung community mismo at saka yung Council of Elders, IPS, yung nagdetermine ng maging IPMR. Kasi yung bit-bit ng IPMR papunta ng, papunta ng barangay legislative body, yung kultura ng trebo na kailangan, oh, ilagay mo doon agenda. Na itong linggo na ito, linggo ng katutubo, kailangan lahat na councilor makasuot ng atayan ng tribo. Nakalagay ng agenda yan. O itong lugar na ito, declared ito hunting ground, sacred place. Kailangan yung IPMR na kaupuro, maglagay siya ng resolution or ganito na ito, hindi natin galawin ito. Ang aming IPMR, mayroon siyang specific tasking kung ano ang gagawin niya habang nakaupo siya doon siya tinatawag na legislative council. Ibig sabihin, yung, yung agenda niya o yung interest niya habang nakaupo doon sa legislative body, yung interest ng community at saka yung policy ng buong ancestral domain, yun yung interest niya pag-upo. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Datu Unad. Okay, so we, are, we were talking about IP representation. We have um, a comment, uh, an information here from Ms. Marisa Cabato. Sabi niya, for I, RDC CAR, one of the core committees, not a special not a special or affiliate committee, is the Committee on Indigenous People's Concerns. No? We also have a private sector representative for Indigenous People sector in the RDC. Moreover, <laughs> IP organizations are welcome to become members of the committee. Kudos to RDC CAR for, for doing this. Thank you very much for sharing uh, with us uh, uh, what RDC CAR is doing, Ms. Marisa Cabato. Okay. Um, have, yes, uh, Sunny, go ahead. Yeah, just I think um, we have to 
uh, highlight cars uh, different mm-hmm. among the other regions because really in terms of Mas empowerment advanced siya, no advanced yeah i think uh, even mm-hmm. the ncipo office in in car i think they are very well empowered no in terms of grounding policy as well as leveraging the interest of ip uh, communities and probably it's also because well the ips are not uh, the minority in car so um, they are they are probably the majority uh, in terms of number and uh, it's um the leveraging of the welfare and the interests of the IP communities and ICCs are I think very well manifested uh, in the region so I think that's that's a good template for the other regions to follow yes, right. if, if you mm-hmm. want to improve uh, the leveraging of uh, uh, EPRAS implementation subnationally thank you mm-hmm. thank you thank you for the uh, very important point uh, Sunny okay so we have uh, another one here from Miss uh, Sheila Almasa of uh, Minda, okay. Um, with regards to the relationship with the BARM government, are there already clear discussions or arrangements with the BARM government, both at the central and provincial levels, in terms of the NCIP services to be extended to the indigenous peoples? If, if yes, uh, please share. And um, uh, Number two, regarding the regional plans, are all regions have the IP master master or regional plans, and how can we access them? Um, may we request our uh, representatives uh, from the NCIP to respond to uh, Ms. Almasa's uh, questions? Director Boisen or um, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner John? Thank you. Uh, what's this? Uh, okay, my regional master plan. Yes, even yes. the regional region. We have also regional master plans, uh, and there are different levels of development. You no, know? uh, not all of them have been completed, but they're accessible. You can just contact our regional office uh, uh, concerned. Uh, regarding the question on BARM, uh, yes. just a week and a half ago. If you notice before, there was some uh, rather strong disagreement on the participation of NCIP in BARM. No? But in, in recent weeks, the NCIP and the MIPA have been working on setting up a mechanism for addressing IP concerns within BARM, working together. No? So that mechanism is uh, being ushered in by two documents. One is a Memorandum of Agreement, and the other one is a joint release and co- cooperation. So in the next few weeks, you will see more interfacing between NCIP and NIPA or BARM and or BARM with BARM uh, in order to address the issues of the IP Thank you. In BARM, sorry. Okay. Maraming salamat, uh, Commissioner Joe. Asani, you were raising your hand. Yeah, with, with regards to BARM, yeah. I think last year we had a request from BARM to mm-hmm. actually comment on their uh, potential legislation on, on IP-related concerns. Parang, parang version ng IPRA for BARM. Mm-hmm. And for I don't BARM. know the status right now, but I think they are in the process of coming up with their own uh, parallel legislation similar to IPRA. So just for information. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Sunny. We have um, another one here from uh, Princess Rabea Habi Abduhalim uh, from Bongao, Tawi-Tawi. Let me read uh, um, her uh, comment uh, and question. Um, is there any solution po na pwedeng magbulat mangaral sa ating mga IPs na ginagamit at inaabuso ng mga politiko ang kanilang dignidad bilang IPs? At sino po ba ang pwedeng magbigay alam sa ating mga IPs patungkol sa problemang tulad nito. Halimbawa, na lang po, makailang beses silang irehistro sa iba't ibang lugar na may iba't ibang pangalan na, na din ang kinakabit sa kanila. Sa, sa madiling salita, kilala, kilala lang ang IPs kung eleksyon at pangdagdag sa mga boto ng mga tumatakbong politiko at kinalaunan ay hindi na po sila kilala ulit. Siguro bago ko iba to uh, Iba to itong katanungan, katanungan kay Datu ay maaari bang makuha natin ang uh, insight ni Mr. Jordan Fronda kasi bilang NGO ay sila ay uh, 
uh, directly nag-i-interact sa ating mga communities. Jordan? Hello? Uh, with yes? With regards ito din sa uh, recent, uh, sa last question. Yes, oo. oo, oo. Yung paggamit, um, quote-unquote, sa ating mga IT, uh, uh, especially during uh, okay. mga election. Oo. Uh, generally, uh, yung mga nakaka-engage naman namin ay uh, parts na uh, may organization sila. So, usually dun sa organizations nila ay mag, uh, well informed naman sila with regards sa uh, elections. Mm -hmm. At minsan, uh, most of the time, syempre yung mga sinusuportahan nila ay kung sino yung nagbibitbit ng concerns nila. So, answering the question, uh, isang way yung uh, uh, pagiging organized ng Mm -hmm. ng mga indigenous peoples. Uh, kung doon naman sa possible interventions from the government, siguro uh, i iwan ko na yung para sumagot doon yung ibang panelists. Ayun. Thank you, Jordan. Okay. Tatu, um, bago ako pumunta kay, uh, kay um, uh, Commissioner, dato may gusto ko bang sabihin dito sa uh, question po ni Princess uh, Rabea? Uh, actually, ma'am, depende yan sa, sa provinces or mm -hmm. sa, uh, kung tingnan natin kung saan lugar yan, kung tingnan mo yung issue ng bar, mm -hmm. kung atin yan, uh, mas lalong malalim yung discrimination ng IP. Uh, hindi ko alam kung itong lugar na ito, portion ba ng lugar na yan? Kasi alam mo man IP, hindi talaga nag-armas yan. Hindi naghabol ng suntukan yan. Tapos hindi nila alam ano yung, ano yung sinasabing word na ginagamit. Hindi nila alam yan. Tapos, lalo na kung ang, ang mga tao, mga IP na andyan sa loob sa ganong organization, sabihin ko lang, mayroong isang tribo doon sa lugar na yan na parang inorganize talaga yung, yung tribo nila. Hindi ko lang sabihin ang pangalan. Sila nakakonek sa NCIP, nakakonek sa, sa taas, tapos automatic yung government nagtulong sa kina to secure sa kanila during election o ano ba yung struggle nila, yung government mismo nagtulong sa kanila. Kahit si, si, si commissioner, mayroon na mga, mga idea, mga batas na parang, parang gina, gina drag paano i-protect ang IP within that ano, isang, isang parang nabuo na isang batas o parisi ng ating national government. Nang apit ka dyan, number one, IP. Kasi yung nabuo yung batas na yan, nabuo yung policy yan, intended sa isang component na may struggle, pero hindi nasali yung general framework to recognize, to respect the indigenous peoples within that declaration sa government. So, yung nagtanong ng ganun, part na sila, kasi kahit ngayon, open, sa sunod na araw kung may eleksyon na, makikita mo talaga ma'am, na ganun talaga ang mangyari sa kanila. So, ang challenge na dito, hindi lang ito parang parang sa akin personal, challenge din sa, sa lahat ito na paano natin sila ma-secure? Tapos paano natin sila ma-determine na ganun yung situation na nila? Kasi ano yan eh, tama yung pagpalabas niya sa expression niya sa tanong na ganun, totoo talaga ang nangyari sa kanila. So, ito pa rin ng pag-uusap even sa NCIP, how to i-protect natin yung kanilang karapatan na hindi magkaroon ng discrimination o pag-aapi during sa eleksyon. Isang ano yan eh, isang, isa pang parang advisory o guidelines ng NCIP para tingnan yung ganong issue. At saka saang lugar yun, yung ganun ang situation. Yun ang sa akin lang, for observation and recommendation na dapat mayroong ganong parang batas na ibigay natin sa national government para yung ibang institusyon, para example, itong institusyon na ito, makatulong sa pagdokument, paglagay ng parisi, na huwag ninyong ganunin ang IP. Kasi may karapatan din sila. Yes, okay. Yes, tama po. Okay, Commissioner John? 
Yes, sir, go ahead. Thank you at tama-tama na si Mr. Fronde yung sumagot ng tanong na yun ng una, no? Kasi gusto itong i-relate dun sa pag, uh, pagsabi niya na ang tamang term sa IPs ay national minorities. Uh, I have to register my strong opposition to that uh, view. Uh, so there's a whole spectrum of laws, framework for treatment of national minorities and indigenous peoples. The national minorities, for instance, is mostly focused on integration, assimilation in that sense, while indigenous peoples are the celebration and promotion of their rights and, and, and institutions. Why is this important and relevant to the question? Because the self-governance or sovereignty and cultural integrity and other uh, protection being provided for IPs is not, is not given to national minorities. Therefore, in, in the appreciation of the rights, pag ginagamit sila at marami talagang gumagamit, uh, ay kailangan ipagtaguyod natin na IPs talaga sila. Mag-iibang treatment. Kung maalala nyo, ito ang gusto ng sa Peace Talks, ito ang unang-unang hiningi ng NPA na hindi na tawagin indigenous people sila, ngunit national minorities. Bakit? Kasi part din ng, ng, ng gustong hiningi ng mga NPAs dun sa uh, sa mga documents na gusto nila ay distribution ng lupa ng ancestral domain, among other things. no? So, uh, they recognize as the peasant sector, not as indigenous peoples, in which case the rights and the celebration of their uh, culture and other assertions of uh, customs and traditions, indigenous knowledge uh, and, and, and institutions are not, are become irrelevant if you talk to them, if you consider them as national minorities. Uh, that is a short version of how I'd like to discuss it. And also, by the way, just a short line, uh, the Global Witness Report being mentioned by Mr. Fronda has been debunked several times, not only by the government, but also the communities mentioned in that study. So let's not quote Global Witness Report anymore. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Jung. We have a question here from um, Adrian Orozco about uh, your oversight uh, function, particularly on other agencies implementing PATs for the welfare of IPs. What is the extent, sir, of your over, uh, oversight function in this regard? Does it have oversight function uh, uh, on uh, other agencies servicing IPs? I didn't get the first part. What is oversight okay. function? Yes, yes. Um, the question is from... Um, uh, okay, where is that? Nawala siya. The, okay, um, how does NCIP implement its oversight function and other agencies implementing PATs for the welfare of IPs? And what is the extent of your oversight function? Uh, if, if I may answer? Yes, sir. Go Thank ahead. Thank you. Uh, well, the uh, the oversight is in basically asserting the rights of the indigenous peoples as provided in the IPRA and other relevant laws. No, the most the most obvious and the most probably one of the strongest is the FPIC. So uh, that would be the most uh, clear answer. But uh, mm -hmm. if I may also mention, there have been several instruments on the recognitions of different rights not only using FPIC, for instance, as an example, and uh, this supports the third third cost of Mr. Fronda and Mr. Sani and also Datunad on the importance of the indigenous peoples for environmental conservation. An exa the example of how the NCIP oversight is being exercised is in making sure the relevant provisions, kasi marami dyan, kunyari environmental law, there will be one line there about recognizing the contribution of indigenous peoples in conservation. But that one line there makes it strong so that the governance remains even when there is an overlap of the different jurisdictions. Kunyari, the contest question between environmental laws and rights of IPs to utilize the natural resources. You may want to appreciate that just June of this year, the Supreme Court ruled that the, this, the, the assertion of use of natural resources by IPs is a means of culture, preservation of cultural integrity, which trumps the the environment, the police power 
uh, consideration in the use of natural resources. So that's an example of the oversight function. Thank you. Thank you, um, Commissioner Zhuang. One of the things nga pala na parang hindi na mention was you modified conditional cash transfer, no, Sonny? In which um, ang IPs, no? Our IPs are uh, beneficiaries of that. Yes, yes. Uh, I, I just and... got reminded because the one who asked the question was from the 40, so parang there was no, hindi, hindi siya na mention. Yeah, and considering right now that they are structurally connected to the SWD. Oh, oh, oh. Mm. So I think uh, it's it's very apparent that that link it can be strengthened, no? That uh, right. collaboration in terms of uh, social protection programs. Mm -hmm. I think another weakness in terms of what we have right now on field is, yeah, we don't have that uh, proper registry for IPs, no? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think, um, yeah, uh, NCIP also manifested uh, possibly doing this, and they have, I think they have been already doing this and hiring people to. Uh, to yes, do something yeah. like this. Oh, oh, oh. That's oh, that's uh, something uh, worth uh, investing on, I guess, in, oh. in, in the near future. Oh. So, Nika, in your in your paper, you mentioned that uh, NCIP should consider uh, serving as a conduit, a conduit for government services for 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 I for the IPs, no, yes. for the indigenous uh, cultural communities, no. Yes, as mm -hmm. mentioned by uh, by commissioner, no, by the commissioner. Oh, oh. Really, NCIP is there to leverage the interests of mm -hmm. IT communities. And uh, I think uh, just the mandatory representation of IPs you know, in, in several of those units down the line subnationally, they are in many ways insufficient because a lot of the representations are, in, are, are not uh, that apt. You know? uh, in terms of articulating the requirements, the positions, as well as the leveraging of IP communities. Mm -hmm. And even I think NCIP also has that uh, possibility of augmenting its own representation in, in national bodies as well. No, um, mm -hmm. it have to be respected. For example, when we were in, in Palawan, uh, when, when we were looking at uh, the NR related concerns, and uh, they were trying to hold a meeting, and, and NCIP has to be there. Parang mm -hmm. we sense that, uh, well, they wanted NCIP not to attend the meeting, something like that. <laughs> and, and I think it's because um well ncip is really uh mandated with so much authority oh. now, if they are if they are there they can flag things that uh, are not supposed to be mentioned by those other uh, institutional partners in those meetings so um ncip i think is in a very good position to to really leverage the interest of ip communities and mm -hmm. they have to enhance uh, representation oh, oh, oh. commissioner before, before i call you let me just uh give this our final question, because I will ask all of you to uh, to give some final remarks, but let me ask this last question from our participants. And this one is from our Facebook, uh, one of our Facebook viewers, Jerry Ann Onto. And uh, Datu, um, perhaps you can answer this. What is your stand on IP's rights to self-determination, especially in the peace process in Mindanao and in many mining communities? Uh, actually, Medyo malalim ang pag-aaral ng mga trebo sa Mindanao tungkol doon sa peace uh, negotiation process. Opo. Kasi ang, ang nangyari, uh, hindi ko masyadong mapersonal eh, yung pag-interpret doon sa nangyari. Pero uh, kami mismo ma'am ang nag-request kay Presidente yung Mindanao Council of Elders to stop uh, peace negotiating activity. Una, during the peace negotiation, uh, magkaroon ng problema ang ancestral domain territory ng tribo. Kasi uh, during mga negotiation, kapag magsabihin ng Presidente, o oh, kayong mga military, wag na kayong mapunta ng bundok kasi ongoing yung, yung peace negotiation. Ang, ang mangyari, Ang makikita ng tribu sa bundok, kasi bundok man, kahit ako bundok man ako nakatira, mga armadong CPP, NPA. So, sabi ko, as leader, ano ba ito? Bakit dito pumunta yung mga, mga armadong CPP, NPA during uh, peace, uh, peace negotiating uh, activity? So, pangalawa, Yung mga IP na mga innocent, yung mga tribal leader na walang alam, ano man yung NP, ano yung ideolohiya. 
Tapos biktima sila na sila ang may may decision na sila patayin. So the uh, we have 350 legitimate IP leaders in Mindanao na hang, hanggang ngayon wala pa ring justice. Uh, so nag-request kami sa kanyang president na kung pwede ihinto muna yung peace negotiation habang hindi pa namin maintindihan ito kasi maraming malaki ang malaki ang issue sa sa IP yung sabi ni Sir kanina na naging red tag ang aming ancestral domain hindi naman po di maring tag yan kasi yung mga tribu andyan pero dahil sa armadong si PPNP na dyan sila nakatira ang tribu ang utusan pag binin ng bugas bigas naging ang naging ang tribu naging member na rin ng si PPNP alam mo yung evaluation ng ng military about 80% ang ang IP na nabilong into CPP in PA dahil sa ganong situation so ang ang council of elders sa Mindanao nagdecide na mag-request kay presidente na ipahinto muna yung negotiation kasi ang number one biktima dito yung mga IP so awa naman ng paghinto na hinto yung peace negotiation tapos alam mo ako ma'am kasi pure retribo talaga ako yung during peace negotiation after na wala yung negotiation 74 na karelated ko ang nag nagalis tapos nagbalik doon sa kultura mayroon kami na tawag na reconciliation sa lahat na nag NPA na mga mga tribo so yun ang dahilan na bakit nag-request kami na ihinto muna kasi kami ang number one apektado dito sa tinatawag na peace negotiation sa activity ng ating national government Thank you, Datu Unad. Okay, um, unfortunately, we don't have uh, any more uh, time left to uh, uh, con to uh, extend our open forum. So uh, to cap our discussion, I ask each speaker for um, some brief, uh, for their uh, brief final remarks, um, starting with uh, Dr. Uh, Sunny Domingo. Sunny, you may have uh, other things to say. Yeah, Sheila, thank you. Well, first of all, thank you to RIS. Thank you to all of those involved in, in uh, having this webinar right now. Um, really, the study was interesting, but it was very broad in terms of coverage. And we're looking at um, an umbrella legislation uh, being grounded for already several decades. Yet, we are limited in terms of number one, in terms of access to, to data and information. And number two, limited in terms of resource as well as time. So we concentrated on, on four case studies, uh, three regions and NCIP. So NCIP as, as the, I guess, the major uh, common ingredient in, in everything you know, was highlighted in terms of uh, us uh, having a, a bigger section devoted to the institution. And I guess it's also a testament to how very important NCIP is from our end. You know. The way I see it, NCIP in terms of impact has the means and probably has the opportunity to do it you know, and to have that uh, supposed uh, change that we want uh, sub-nationally and across all IP communities. NCIP is mandated to have that authority. It's mandated to have that leverage against other entities you know, um, to, to further the interest and, and welfare of IP and uh, ICCs. So um, that's my high regard for for NCIP. Uh, the other side to the coin really is NCIP has to, to better itself. No? Sabi nga nung, nung isang nag-comment, uh, a decade ago, World Bank came up with a study that is, I think, very similar in terms of uh, final outputs. No? Um, if you're going compared to what we saw uh, a couple of years ago. And that's also a testament to how um, we need to further augment what we're doing right now. NCIP, I guess, uh, started with, with institutional baggages, it being the product of merging of existing institutions. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, the, the main issue for mergers, you know, even in, in other organizations, those yes. being merged into mm -hmm. a new entity. And uh, they did not have control in terms of staffing, in terms of the technical uh, staff required to do their mandate or to, to implement uh, IPRA for that matter. So they have years probably to uh, to do something about this. And I guess NCIP right now, and I've talked to them 
we had our FGD even with uh, uh, Sir Kapuyan uh, mm -hmm. before. Uh, I think we spent uh, uh, late uh, night one time uh, talking to them. And I think they have a good leadership and they have um, this opportunity to do better. Uh, so thank you again, Sheila. Thank you to NCIP. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our audiences. Have a good day. Thank you very much, Sunny. I know you, you're very busy you know, of completing all those studies. <laughs> so maraming maraming salamat. Okay, um, Director Boise, you may have uh, something to say, ma'am. Director Boise, yes? Bri some brief remarks. Yes, ma'am. Yes, uh, under the leadership of uh, our chairperson, NCIP is leveling up its performance. And with the right uh, resources, I know it could do more. Uh, its resources, as it was said, that it is substantial, it's not really enough to do its gar gar gargantuas gargantuas task. Yeah, that is why NCIP is moving heaven and earth to to tap other agencies just so to help uh, serve the, the our IP brothers. So uh, let us all embrace the WNA, the whole of nation approach, and good governance for the love of the IPs. Thank you so much. At maraming salamat din po, Director Boisen. Um, Commissioner Chong Navarro, sir, we're honored Hello. to have you at this uh, virtual oh, event. Thank you, it's sir. It's my pleasure. Salamat na marami. Uh, gusto ko lang dagdag, supportan ko yung sinabi ni Dr. Sunny. Sorry, masyado akong maging casual. Ano? So, Miss Dr. Uh, Domingo. Uh, sabi niya, ano, yung, yung role ng NCIP as a coordinative kasi marami sa delivery namin dapat na service dapat ay are really coordinative functions yung sa ejemplo kanina sa sa MCCT 3.4 million doon ng mem ang members ng na IPs doon at alam niyo ba nang dumating ang COVID-19 nagre-release ang DALG DA at uh, in DSWD in different levels of directives na i-prioritize ang IPs yan ang yan ang magandang coordination na nangyayari ngayon at ito ay isinulong ng uh, EO70. Ayan ang malaking contribution yan. Ngayon, gusto kong sabihin sa inyo na ang budget ng NCIT, para, ang MOA niya, ang, ang kanyang community service center, para alam ng lahat, ay nasa 6,000 ang average. 6,000 ay coverage niyan, ay ang rent, utilities, ang pag-internet niya, bond paper, etc. Nakita niyo 6,000. Saan kami pupulutin niyan, di ba? Pero ngayon, magulat kayo, from 9 million, ang budget namin dapat for delineation, ah, sorry, 11 million, ginawa ng 50 plus. Ah, sorry, hindi pa approved, pero yan ang na-approved ng DBM na isulong sa Kongreso ngayon. At wala naman ko na question. At we are very hopeful and positive na ma yung increase from 1.2 billion to 1.5 billion. So that 300 million increase is very, is they make us very, uh, ano ba tawag nito? optimistic of, of improving really and de delivering more. Kung dati ay six, six per year lang ang kaya namin i-delineate, ngayon ay nasa uh, 40 plus na ata per year. So, mapapabilis ang ibang servisyo ng NCIT at sa inyong tulong sa lahat dito kasama ang mga CSOs, government, ah, NEDA pa lang, malaking tulang NEDA lalo dahil sila nag-approve ng kung anong priority, di ba? Uh, uh, ay salamat sa inyong suporta at we look forward to working with you at para maservisyohan natin ang ating mga payong, ang ating mga patutubo. Salamat po sa inyong lahat. Maraming salamat din po, uh, Commissioner John Nab Navarro. Okay, um, may we hear from you, Mr. Uh, Jordan Fronda of CEC? Any final remarks? Yes, hello. Uh, bago mag final remarks, mabilis lang na response siguro kay Commissioner din sa mga points na uh, binanggit niya. Uh, tingin ko, I would have to concede yung major point ko. Uh, tingin ko mali yung uh, technically uh, politically correct term ang national minority. So, tingin ko hindi siya yung technical uh, technically tamang word. Although, uh, magsistand ako na generally, tingin ko mag-agree tayo na ang mga IPs ay uh, marginalized. Ayun. Uh, 
pangalawa, the uh, Binsa Global Witness, I uh, think uh, we have to agree to disagree. and it's a standard witness that uh, every death na recorded doon ay totoo. So, hindi ko alam paano siya doon na block. Uh, yun. So, final words. Uh, maraming salamat sa uh, PIBS at sa lahat ng mga panelists natin, uh, sa researchers. Kudos. Sobrang daring itong re research na ito. At masaya kami na maging part uh, ng panel uh, dahil uh, kinikilala namin ang halaga ng mga indigenous peoples sa pagsagip sa kalikasan. Uh, yun lang. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jordan from of CSC. And of course, not last but not definitely not the least, Datu, Datu Unad. Sir, may we have uh, some uh, final remarks from you? Uh, maraming salamat. Lano kay Sher Domingo, kay Ma'am, at saka si Sher ano yan? Uh, yung bagong nagsalita. Uh, in behalf of the 110 tribes the whole Philippines, ako nagpapasalamat sa inyo sa, sa P P P PDIS na kayo yung nagpapasilitit na first time ito na nakasali ang representation ng community IP the whole Philippines sa usaping ito. Kasi noon, uh, hindi kami sinali. Pero yung sinala, sinasabi ko ngayon, sa kabuuan, more on pagkilala sa karapatan ng katutubo. Ako nagpapasalamat sa inyo, sa inyong uh, institution, organization, na parang nagbigay ng time to discuss about the policy sa ano talaga ang karapatan ng katutubo. Ano talaga ang, ang gawin para Ma mabigyan ng pansin ang ating mga katutubo. No? Sa madaling salita, ang NCIP malaking tulong din sa, sa amin, sa community. Marami silang ginagawa, mga sakripisyo, tapos binabato pa minsan ng masamang mga intensyon, masamang salita, kasi hindi magkaintindihan ng community, even other mga institusyon. Pero para, para sa akin, as NCIP, sila ang parang nasa government to recognize and promote the culture and karapatan ng mga katutubo. Kahit pa paano, andyan talaga sila. So, para sa, sa tribu ng Mindanao, Bendihol, Philippines, ulitin ko, uh, ang pinapresent natin na 11 building blocks, ibalik ko, yun talaga ang basihan. Habang naglalakbay ang tribu, sa kanyang community, sa kanyang ancestral domain, bit-bit niya ang recognition ng kanyang karapatan. So marami pong salamat ma'am, maraming salamat sir. Sa NCIP, marami rin salamat sa inyo lahat. At maraming maraming salamat din po sa inyo dato unan. Okay, so please join me in thanking Dr. Sunny Domingo, Director Mary Grace Boasen, Commissioner Chong Navarro, Mr. Jordan Fronda, and Datu Lipatuan Chowal Unad for the valuable insights that they shared with us this afternoon. Let us give all of them a well-deserved big virtual clap. Okay. And uh, we will also like to acknowledge the, the presence of the representatives from the National Anti-Poverty Commission, Indigenous Peoples Sectoral Council, um, which performs an oversight role and policy uh, rec um, recommendatory role to the Office of the President as mandated by law, as mandated by uh, RA 8425. So maraming salamat po for, jo also, uh, uh, for joining our webinar uh, this afternoon. Okay, so friends, before we finally close, I would like to announce the three winners who will receive a PIDS notebook. They are... Arnel Alvarado, Karen Veduban, and Ramil Gata. So, Arnel uh, Alvarado, Karen Veduban, and Ramil Gata. Um, the webinar team of PIDS will uh, um, email you, will get in touch with you for your prize. Okay. And finally, we have uh, some uh, reminders. Okay, so you can access all the presentations from uh, today's webinar from uh, the PIDS website. So you can download a copy of uh, all the presentations as well as 
And we have also on the screen the link to the full study of Dr. Uh, Domingo and Ms. R.V. Troy Manihar. And uh, please help us uh, improve our webinars by answering the feedback survey that will pop on your screen after this webinar. So we will also email you um, the link after the event. Your comments are important to us to improve our uh, virtual events. And also uh, do regularly visit our website and uh, social uh, media pages. And we thank again all those who uh, um, followed uh, the, the highlights of this uh, event uh, on Twitter and also those who watched our webinar uh, on our Facebook page. And here are our um, forthcoming webinars. Okay, so next week, October 27, we will have the webinar on resilient legs for economic recovery in the post-pandemic -pand era. This is a webinar that uh, we, uh, we co-organize with uh, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. So remember, October 27 is a Wednesday, okay? So it's not the first day. Our regular webinar, our regular uh, webinar series is every Thursday, but this time this will be held on a Wednesday, okay? November 4, we will have our webinar on the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Programs Payment System. And on November 11, um, Another virtual event this time, the, the results of a PIDS study um, that analyzed the uh, 2019 National ICT Household Survey. Okay, and finally, we would like to thank um, the various organizations that um, attended uh, this event, those from the government, academe, civil society, business, um, media and uh, the international development community. Maraming salamat po. So uh, this concludes our uh, webinar for this week. Thank you very much for staying on until the end. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay, stay informed too. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. And again, a happy National Indigenous, Indigenous Peoples Month to all of you. See you next week. Bye-bye.